testing for the YouTube stream, testing. I'm waiting for 10 o'clock. Is it? Okay. Good morning. My name is Anne McCauley. I am chair of the Scarborough Panel Committee of Adjustment. I'm joined by my fellow panel members. Okay, I'm joined by my fellow panel members, Mr. Uh, Taylor, Mr. Stinson, Mr. Hahn, and Mr. Reed. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act of 1980, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that applies to the property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. We uh, start our meetings with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the land that we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississauga and Chippewa bands. Committee of Adjustment public hearings are now conducted in a hybrid in-person and virtual format. Some applicants and participation participants will make their submissions in person and others will participate virtually by electronic means through Rebex and online digital platform. The meetings are also streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel and anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Those who wish to participate virtually and have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All virtual participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is entered, you will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when the item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be available, only be visible during your five minute allocated speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you'll be reinstated as an attendee. For both in-person and virtual participants, Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadlines. Those participating through Wendex are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Receiving a copy of a decision of the committee. People attending in person today who want to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must fill out a decision request card and those participating virtually need to submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, 
address and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the local uh, T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Board or in some instances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government abandoned the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal committee of de adjustment decisions. Only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and specified persons and public bodies, as those terms are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. Our hearing procedure. I will call each item in order as listed on the agenda. Making your submissions. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair that should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minutes. The time is shown up on the screen over there. Any presentation or other materials you wish to submit to the committee must have been emailed in advance of the hearing. Staff and committee members cannot accept materials at the hearing. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. Please confirm, please confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to receive notice are informed of the changes. When individuals either in support or opposed to the applicant will be invited to speak. Generally, we'll call on speakers in the hearing room first and then those participating through WebEx. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they permit, finish their presentation. When all speakers have finished, the applicant agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. That will make, mark the end of the discussion. The application will then be taken into the committee for a decision. Morning session. Before hearing the first item, can I have confirmation of the minutes of last meeting? Happy to move confirmation. Confirmation moved by motion. Mr. Reed, a second by Mr. Hahn. Through, through the chair, uh, Mr. Reed, can you uh, please turn on your mic? Pardon me. I move confirmation of the minutes. Thank you. I will second the motion. Okay, all those in favor? That motion is carried. Ask panel members, are there any members, are any excused members' absence from this hearing? Thank you, Chair. Um, I would like to move that the Scarborough panel of the Committee of Adjustment excuses Nancy Ferguson from the April 3rd, 2024 Committee of Adjustment hearing. Thank you. All those in favor? Through the Chair, you need to have a seconder on the motion. Okay. Moved by Mr. Stinson, seconded by Mr. Hahn. Yeah. I will second the favor? motion. Okay. Mr. De uh, Secretary Treasurer, are there any declarations of interest of the panel or staff? I can confirm there are no declarations from of interest from staff. Okay, panel, any declarations? No. No declarations of interest. Deferral request. Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, Secretary Treasurer, have you received any requests for deferral? 
through the chair for the morning session, there are two deferral requests. The first deferral request is for item number one, 537 Kennedy Road, deferral sine die at the request of the applicant in order to address um, community planning concerns. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who is here for item uh, 1537 Kennedy Road? The recommendation is that it be deferred at the request of the applicant. Anyone here? No. Okay. Is the applicant here? Good morning, members of committee. Sorry, I'm, I'm here to speak to that item. Okay. I understand. Um, my name is. Sorry. Go ahead. Your request. Um, my name is Naomi Mirren. Yes, I am here on behalf of my client, Christopher Dale C. Derhack, um, the owner of the property municipally known as 537 Kennedy Road, and we support community planning's uh, recommendation for deferral. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I interrupted when you were uh, giving your name and address. Would you give it again, please? Yes, my name is Naomi Maris, and I'm here on behalf of my client, who's the owner of the property at 537 Kennedy Road. No, I'm, I'm looking for your address. Oh, sure. Um, that's 181 Bay Street, uh, Brookfield Place, Suite 1800. Okay, thank you very much. We have a request for deferral uh, by the applicant. Do I have a motion for deferral? I have a motion from Mr. Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I'd like to move deferral. I think there are significant um, if through, the, through the chair, there are also people who are um, who have um, registered to speak on this item. Before you bring a motion forward, okay. All right, I have people. Brown, I, uh, I have the people. Yes, listed. David Brown. I suppose. Okay, Mr. Brown, you uh, what, can you give your name and address, please? Yeah, David Brown, 535 Kennedy Road, and I support the motion for deferral. Thank you. Next person. Would you give your name? I also support the deferral. I need your name and address first, please. Yeah. Holly Morin, 535 Kennedy Road. Thank you. And you support the deferral. The next uh, person, please. Yes. Go ahead, please. My name is Sandra. My name is Sandra Gadet, and I'm at 539 Kennedy Road. And I also support the motion for deferral. Thank you. The next person, please. Through the chair, Gerald is not online. Gerald Gaudet is not online. Okay. Can we go to the uh, last person then, please? Rosanna. Okay. Good morning. Would you give your name and your address, please? Good morning. My name is uh, Rosanna Caru. I live at 44 Clita Drive, and I support the motion to the federal. Okay, thank you very much. No other speakers? Okay. All right, now we can proceed with the panel. Uh, do I have a motion for deferral? Thanks, Chair. I'll move a motion for deferral of this application. There are significant issues that remain, and so the deferral will give time for the applicant to work with community planning and the neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Do I have a seconder? Chair, I'd like to second that motion. Okay. Moved by Mr. Reed and seconded by Mr. Uh, Stinson. All those in favor of the deferral? That motion is carried. Item number one is deferred. Sine die. Okay. The are there any other deferrals, Mr. Secretary Treasurer? Through the chair, the, the last deferral for the morning session is item number 11, to Doreen Crescent. Deferral sine die at the request of the applicant to correct, in order to correctly identify all of the requested variances. Thank 
Thank you. Item 11 to Doreen Crescent. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to the deferral for this application? No? Is the applicant online? Would you give your uh, name and uh, address to the applicant, please? I'm Chris Friesen, and I'm at 17 Doreen Crescent. You're at 17 Doreen Crescent? That's correct. Okay. Um, and you're the applicant, are you? I'm the agent for the landowner. Okay. And you're requesting a deferral? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I have a different address for you. That's what has thrown me here. Um, okay. Oh, the, the office is, um, that I work through is at 905 uh, Mackenzie Avenue. Okay. Just making sure that I've got the hey, right Jeff. person here. Okay. Yeah. This is a, a request for a deferral of item number 11 for to Doreen Crescent. Do I have a motion for deferral? Chair, I move that we defer this matter. A motion from Mr. Stinson. Seconded by me. Seconded by Mr. Hahn. All those in favor of deferral? Okay. That motion is carried. Are there any other requests for deferral? Through the chair, there are none. Thank you. Okay, we will proceed with the uh, hearing. Item one has been deferred. So our first item on the agenda is item number two, 756 Warden Avenue. It's I have a list of people who want to speak to this item. First of all, is the applicant in the audience? You're the applicant, sir? Okay. Would you come down to the podium, please? By raise of hands, would you just show if you are in the audience and wish to speak to this item. Okay, so I've got a couple of people there. Once the applicant has, uh, has spoken, we will call you down, and then I have a list of people who would like to speak uh, that are uh, virtual. We just get set up here a minute. Okay, the, uh, this is an application for 756 Warden Avenue. It is to construct a new building with electronic gaming and bingo hall uses on the site. A previous minor variance was approved to construct an, an industrial building. There's a cross reference to a site plan and the application was previously deferred at the request of the applicants. The uh, application is to permit a, a restaurant and games arcade. Electronic gaming is not permitted. And secondly, to provide for parking spaces that are only permitted in the front yards they're proposing 346 parking spaces in the front yard. Front yard is, uh, is considered to be Comstock in this particular application. And then games, arcades are <coughs> prohibited except in the city center and district commercial zones. This property is not uh, zoned for those uses. 
so games, arcades, and games machines are not permitted. Thank you very much. That's your application. Sir, uh, would you give us our, your name first of all and your address, and then you have five minutes. Yep. Uh, name is Paul Matsopoulos. Address is uh, 756 Warren Avenue. Can I have your name again, please? It's Paul Nitsopoulos. Ah, okay. And you're the owner, are you? Correct. Okay. Is the agent also going to speak? Uh, she is virtually. Okay. All right. Uh, through, through the chair, um, just a reminder, like in terms of the owner and the applicant can make presentations, but in terms of rebuttal, um, it, um, five minutes has, um, is divided between the owner and the applicant. Each of them don't get five minutes. Oh. Just to clarify. Okay, so each of you get five minutes to speak. But when it comes into, and everyone else in the audience who wishes to speak or is online gets five minutes to speak. Then at the end of all that, the uh, owner or the applicant has an opportunity for a, a rebuttal for five minutes, or if they want to share it, you get two and a half minutes each. It doesn't have to, it, it's, it's up to you as to how you want to handle that. So I guess I'd rather my agent go first. Okay, so would the, would the agent come down? She's virtual. Then, sir, you virtual. might just sit down there. Good. Yeah, good, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Katrina Mogash, and our office is 55 St. Clair Avenue West. Uh, we submitted a presentation, uh, which I can run through. I'm not sure. I believe it's being, well, perfect. It's on screen now. Just let me know okay. when I can start. Okay, proceed. <clears throat> Great. So good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee. So I'm a planner with Arcadis representing the applicant on this file. Also with me today, who you just met, is the owner of the site and several other parties who will be providing deputations in support of this application. So just want to start off by noting that Dolphin Bingo has operated a bingo hall at Eglinton Avenue East and Warden Avenue for several decades. However, this site is being redeveloped, requiring them to find a new home within the community to ensure they can continue supporting the over 80 charities that benefit from their operations. So while a bingo hall is currently permitted on the 756 Warden Avenue site, minor variances are required to allow for supporting uses and address parking orientation. This application was previously deferred to allow for refinements and clarity on the variances today. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So the site is situated at the corner of Comstock and Warden Avenue and is currently vacant, about 900 meters south of the existing Dolphin Bingo location and surrounded by employment and commercial uses. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the official plan designates the site as a general employment area and identifies Warden Avenue as an arterial road. Next slide. The site is zoned both industrial and general industrial under the former City of Scarborough Employment District bylaw, and both of these zones permit recreational uses, which includes bingo halls. This interpretation was confirmed by zoning staff. Next slide, please. So shown on the screen is the proposed site plan for the new building on the site that will be subject to a future site plan approval. Notably, all other zoning requirements are met other than what's being discussed today. Next slide, please. So on screen, the variances being requested include allowing electronic gaming as a permitted use, a restaurant as an ancillary use, and front yard parking along Comstock Road. I'll now walk through how the requested variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act. Next slide, please. So the requested uses are minor in nature as they support and supplement the as of right bingo hall use and are not anticipated to cause adverse impacts on surrounding areas. An electronic gaming use represents a minor change in the operation of the permitted bingo hall to allow for evolution of available technologies, from handheld and paper bingo to electronic devices in a fixed location, while ensuring the paper, paper bingo does remain. The site orientation with front yard parking is in keeping with the existing fabric with screening to be considered as well. Next slide, please. Regarding desirability, the requested uses are appropriate for the site with the bingo hall use representing most of the proposed GFA. From an economic standpoint, the proposed uses are compatible with, with and suitable for bingo halls which serve as funders of services through their revenue. 
approval of this application will assist in generating long-term economic prosperity and support local community groups, some of whom you'll hear from today. <clears throat> Front yard parking is also desirable due to site orientation, existing curb cuts, and tra the transportation infrastructure already in place. Next slide, please. So the application is in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw as previous OMB decisions deemed that the use of electronic gaming in Bingo Hall conformed with the recreational use under the Scarborough bylaw. This decision clearly illustrates that electronic gaming and bingo halls are, ching, are akin to one another and fall under the recreational use. The addition of electronic gaming would simply modernize the proposed and permitted bingo hall, allowing an existing business to continue operating in the area with the same permissions it currently benefits from. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so general employment areas are located on the periphery of employment areas and are places for economic activities. Uh, electronic gaming and bingo halls is a continuation of precedent that's found within Toronto as these facilities have historically been located in employment areas. So while planning staff have noted in their report that electronic gaming use constitutes a land employment land use conversion, it's our opinion that the addition of a standalone electronic bingo, bingo machine does not represent a change in land use as supported by the previous OMB decisions. These variances do not intend to remove land from the employment area, nor will, they, nor will this, there be un, an unintended consequence of approving this application. <clears throat> Next, for these reasons, the proposed variances maintain the general intent of the official plan, particularly policies related to employment areas. All right, so I know I'm at time, but just in conclusion, uh, the applicant is required to find a new site for their existing bingo hall and electronic gaming facility, given that their current location is being developed. Keeping the site that's used within the community is a key consideration to ensure the ongoing support of, of the charities. So again, just to reiterate, the addition of electronic gaming provides for the modern transition of how bingo is played, adding electronic devices, which are in a fixed location to the current user experience, which includes electronic and traditional bingo cards. So again, just as quickly, we'd also like to note that the uh, electronic gaming and restaurants are currently permitted on their existing site, which is also within an employment area. So again, while we acknowledge staff's reports, it's our opinion that the proposed variances satisfy the four tests under the Planning Act. Thank you for your time and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the applicant by committee members? No questions? Okay. The next speaker. Um, sir, do you wish to be a speaker and, uh, and therefore not um, have the opportunity to rebut, uh, but allow your... Um, agent to rebut all the issues, or do you want to share the rebuttal? I can share the rebuttal with her. Okay, we'll uh, yeah. allow, allow you five minutes to speak, and then at the end, you and your, um, and the applicant will share the rebuttal, okay? Okay, so, would you give us your name and address again, please? Yep, first name is Paul, last name Nitsopoulos, address would be 756 Warden Avenue. Thank you, you have five minutes, go ahead. Okay, um, so good morning, uh, members of Scarborough Committee of Adjustments, and thank you for your time today. Uh, again, my name is Paul Nassopoulos. Uh, my family and I have proudly uh, operated Dolphin Gaming, a charitable uh, gaming and bingo hall in Scarborough Southwest for over 27 years. Uh, we currently employ roughly 70 staff, 50 of which are uh, full-time staff. Currently, we're in the process of moving our operations from 1911, as the area is slated for future uh, redevelopment in the Golden Mile area. Uh, we have secured a new location down the road at 756 Warden Avenue. The proposed site is currently vacant and has been vacant for quite a number of years. Um, and located within the general employment area, which does not specifically list electronic gaming as a permitted use. However, the current zoning does allow for certain recreational uses, such as uh, a bingo hall. As a result, we have submitted the minor variance application before you, to, before you today to allow to allow the electronic gaming as a permitted use on the site, um, as well as a uh, restaurant as an anchor use uh, to allow for front yard parking along Comstock, which is crucial for our, our uh, continued operations. You've heard from our planner who explained the ap application in detail and outlined how the, uh, the request variances meet the four tests of a minor variance under section 45 of the Planning Act. 
the application is not a land use conversion, rather it pre preserves the employment designation and is in keeping with existing uses. I would like to remind the committee that Dolphin Gaming's existing site on Eglinton is uh, similarly located within a general employment area and these uses are permitted, meaning that there is a precedent for this type of application. Simply put, these variances seek to continue Dolphin Gaming's operation as is on a new site uh, down the road uh, from our current site so that we can continue to support the local area. Uh, Dolphin Gaming is, is proud to support the, sorry, is proud to support and be partnered with over 85 charities, uh, most of them being local, Scarborough-based, uh, across Ontario, and we are on track to support a total of 94 charities currently and by July 2024. We have raised over $48 million for the, our uh, charity partners since 2016. We are, on, we are on pace for 9.5 million this year alone for the 80-something uh, charities that we currently have. These funds are, are, are injected back into the community, uh, programming and benefits provided by employment youth, poverty, and uh, wellness organizations such as Camp Kirk, uh, Birchmount Bluffs, Epilepsy, uh, North York uh, uh, Little uh, Prince Daycare, Ontario Association of Youth Employment, uh, Ronald McDonald House, St. John Ambulance, uh, West Hill Baseball, West Park uh, Health Center, Variety Village, and the list goes on and on. Uh, you'll see that the vast majority of these charities, nearly 80 in total, uh, each took the time to draft a, uh, and submit letters of support of the minor variance application before you today. If you haven't already uh, done so, I encourage you to take some time to read, to read through these letters as they each detail the many programs and benefits that would potentially be at risk should this application not be approved. I would also like to take a moment to personally thank the many charity representatives that have joined us today to speak in support of this application, either in person or virtually. In January, Councillor uh, uh, Candovel visited and toured our current facility at 1911 Eglinton Avenue East, and we spoke with him about challenges we faced with finding a new location for our charitable gaming facility. We wanted to stay within the Scarborough Southwest community, as this is home for us, while the local councillor was not available to dispute today. He has submitted a letter of support and indicated to us that he puts a lot of thought into, the, into this, spoke with community planning staff and does believe 756 Warden Avenue is a suitable location for Dolphin Gaming. Additionally, Councillor Thompson and Councillor Ninziana have both submitted their own letters of support for this minor variance. As longstanding councillors, community advocates and members of a planning and housing committee they are fully, fully supportive of this application. We are especially grateful for Council Nunziana joining us this morning and providing a thoughtful uh, deputation to echo her full support. As well, we are grateful to the previous council for unanimously, unanimously acknowledging the importance of modifying the draft zoning bylaw specifically to safeguard the operation of bingo halls and places of assembly and employment areas during the council meeting on November 9th 2021. This motion was uh, referenced with Council Nunziata's letter of support. As recently as December 1st, 2023, meeting sir, of planning. Sir, can you wrap up, please? Sure. Uh, so, in closing, without any approval today for the minor variance application, these charities will not receive the funding they so heavily rely on. And considering the currently uh, affordability crisis, we cannot risk that essential program, uh, community programs would be disrupted. For this reason, I ask that you please approve this uh, minor variance application. Thank you again for allowing me to speak today and happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Thank you, sir. First of all, I have two questions. The first one is um, your present site at 1911 Eglinton Avenue East. Does it have electronic games? Correct. We're going as is. We're just moving locations just due to the fact that the okay. area is being redeveloped. Okay. That's the, the first question. The second question, I know that this property is being redeveloped. Um, how much longer do you have to stay there? 
Um, well, I my lease is basically a uh, one year uh, demolition clause. So he could he could write me tomorrow and I could be gone. Problem is with bingo, infrastructure wise, building wise, and all that takes quite a few years. You know, you got to go through uh, OLG approval, AGCO approval, and municipal approval. So we okay. still got our work cut out for us. And again, just the infrastructure alone, wiring and so on and so forth. So you have a timeline that's that's tight with a lot of steps that have to go through. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. And electronic games are, are uh, presently... Uh, you were taking the exact same business that we have currently running from 1997, which was revised in 2016 with the revitaliza revitalization. And... Uh, moving it to a specific spot. Okay. Just a, just a note for council that when I opened in 97, there was roughly just over 25 bingo halls in, just in Toronto. And we currently sit at only four, which are all only electronic bingo halls. There's only four of us left in Toronto right now. Yeah. And again, all four of those are all electronic okay. bingo halls. Okay. All right, any uh, questions from the, yes. Mr. Stinson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Very good. Um, it's not often I see so many refusals from various departments in the city. You're aware of these refusals? Yes. Do you understand that when we hear about the charity and we know the good work that's being done, we, we appreciate that, but we're also trying to fit within the guidelines we have to operate in? And you mentioned it earlier, the four test rule. So I, I just want to draw your attention to that. Um, the distance from your old location to the one you're proposing, what is that distance? Uh, it's just under, I think it's roughly 700 meters. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Any other questions? But just to add to that, the current site does allow for recreational use, the 756 Warden Avenue, and Bingo does follow under recreational zoning. Okay. So it, the only... Difference is, is that we don't have, uh, I don't think the city has a use for electronic gaming, but yet there's four of us that exist. So we had to do a minor variance for our current location that we're currently at right now. And that was done in 2015 to allow us to go to recreational zoning, which was approved by the city of Toronto. And then again, as well, there was the two Delta sites locations and also the Rama location on Kennedy Road. Okay, thank you. Uh, people in the audience who wish to speak on this matter, would you come down to the podium, please? I also have a number of people who wish to, to speak virtually. We'll take the in-person first. Could you give us your name and address, please. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Uh, my name is Deirdre Thomas, and my address is 639A Mount Pleasant Road in Toronto. Thank you. Go ahead. You have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and committee members. Uh, thank you to Dolphin Gaming for inviting me to talk to you today. Uh, my name is Deirdre, and I'm the executive director of an organization called Camp Kirk, and we provide overnight camp and recreational programming in the Kawarthas, but predominantly the kids and the campers that come to us are from the GTA, so across Toronto. Uh, our campers and our leaders in training are 6 to 18. Um, they all have the following, one or more of the following diagnosis, autism, ADD, Tourette's, learning disabilities, and other neurodiversities. And what makes our camp special is that we're specifically designed to cater for neurodiverse kids. Uh, we have a very small group, um, non-competitive programming, and a focus on strengths to really create that safe space for our campers to discover what they have to offer the world. And these are kids that struggle, often struggle in our school systems, in our societies, because they do think and act differently. So creating a space where they can build their self-esteem, they can acquire life skills, and they can thrive is so important. But it's more than just about the kids, it's also the families. Um, and I'm just gonna read a really short story um, from a parent um, where she says, when you're knee deep in caring, you don't realize the toll that it's taking mentally and how physically exhausting it can be. The break offered by Camp Kirk gives me the opportunity to recharge my batteries and really be there for my son. 
The smile and running hug from my son on pickup day is like no other. Seeing my son's exhausted yet happy face and hearing his scratchy voice from so much laughing, singing, and talking is amazing. His self-confidence is boosted, his esteem restored. Kids just need a chance to be really seen and heard, and at Camp Kirk, they get that opportunity. We also believe that a family's financial situation should not stop a child from coming to camp. So we fundraise year round to subsidize all of our camp fees and we provide financial aid to families that need extra help to bring their child to camp. Dolphin Gaming provides Camp Kirk with around 12,000 per month or 144,000 per year. They are our single biggest donor. They account for one fifth of all of our funds raised. 50% of our families seek financial aid and that can be all of their camp fees. Some families do not even have the $50 to apply for camp. These families are the ones that need that respite and support more often than anyone else because they're often coming from marginalized communities across the GTA. Any delays in this minor variance application would result in these financial aid families not being able to send their children to camp to learn and build the necessary skills to thrive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just want to ask you, when you said the 12,100 a month? 12,000 per month, 144,000 per year. Thank you. Um, what does that represent in terms of people? So our camp is small deliberately. Um, because you have to have a small environment in, all, in order to foster the skills and learning development of our children. So we support 150 children across the summer at our camp in the Quarthas. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Give us your name and your address, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. My name is Karen Stintz, S-T-I-N-T-Z, and my address is 3701 Danforth Avenue. All right, go ahead. Thank you very much. I, um, uh, as some of you may know, I was a former city councillor with the City of Toronto for 11 years, so I wear two hats here today, um, certainly, but uh, the applicant has come to ask me to speak to the charitable aspect and the charitable benefits for the community that his gaming facility provides. Because currently I, I am president and CEO of Variety Village and Variety the Children's Charity. The funds that we receive from the Dolphin Gaming help provide children with a disability access to sport and recreation. The programs that we provide at our facility and throughout Ontario uh, include um, uh, swimming, camp, one-to-one uh, -one support for, for camp. Uh, we have adapted hockey. Uh, we have uh, also we have seven para sport teams that train at Variety Village, and so those kids have opportunities to have introduction to recreational opportunities, and then they have a chance to grow into competitive sport. So these uh, families, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, they face a lot of challenges, not just with access, but also with affordability. So the money that we receive through this gaming opportunity and the electronic bingo allows us to provide affordable opportunities to families throughout the Scarborough area and make sure that those kids have a chance to play. It's really important, these programs are critical because 50% of children with a disability self-report that they have no friends. So without places like Variety Village and the programs that we offer, these children become even more marginalized and even more at risk for other um, problems later on in life. So we're proud of the work that we do. And um, when we had an opportunity to apply as a charity to Dolphin, uh, we did work closely with the city of Toronto to make sure that our application was consistent with what the city of Toronto approves. And uh, when we did receive approval to be a charity that, received, that could receive funding from Dolphin, uh, again, it was under the premise that they did operate electric, um, the electronic bingo. And uh, that's why we were able to make application because there, there were additional funds and additional space for us to volunteer and be part of that opportunity. So for us, um, it is critical 
uh, as was mentioned by the previous speaker, that uh, the dolphin continue to operate so that the community can continue to benefit from the proceeds of the gaming operation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this matter? No? All right, then we will go to the, um, the uh, virtual list. I have uh, Frances Nunziata. Is she on the line? Good morning, Councillor. Would you please identify yourself and give your address? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. You have five minutes. Okay. I believe I heard you mention my name. I wasn't sure. Um, I'm Councillor Nunziata. Uh, Councillor for York South Weston, and I'm just going to give you a bit of history on bingo. Um, I've, uh, I've been called the bingo queen of Toronto. Uh, the reason for that is that I've been involved in bingos for over 40 years. Uh, started 40 years ago as a single parent um, and uh, I've gone to politics that it was very difficult for me uh, to pay for recreation programs for my son, so I was obligated to uh, run bingos to volunteer to have my fees uh, subsidized um, with the uh, with the revenue that uh, the um, uh, that the club received from bingos. And when I was mayor of York, uh, we had so many sports clubs and senior groups that uh, that were in desperate need of funding to uh, to continue providing their programming and services. So we did open up a bingo hall in the city of York at that time when I was mayor. And we, we gave the opportunity for local um, groups to run their bingos, uh, baseball clubs, hockey, seniors group, uh, in order to raise revenue. And so I've been involved and uh, volunteer, and I even volunteered when I was the mayor of York uh, to help some of these charities. So um, in 2021, uh, Delta, uh, Delta Bingo, uh, were, they were located at St. Clair and Old Western Road, and they had to relocate their facility, uh, similar to Dolphin, uh, because the city expropriated part of their property and there was a development happening on their site. So they relocated to Evans Avenue. And at that time, there was an issue as well. And uh, so what we did in 2021, there was uh, an official plan employment uh, report that came through council. And at that meeting, we received a number of uh, petitions from charities all over Toronto, um, supporting the relocation of Delta Bingo. And at that time, there was a, an amendment that was moved by myself and uh, council carried it unanimously is that we do allow for the city staff to come back with a further report to allow bingo halls in employment areas. And that was approved. And what happened with Delta, they as well went to the Committee of Adjustment and came to Council and they got their approval to relocate at Evans Avenue. I can tell you that a lot of the charities that I know and I'm still involved in need the bingo to raise revenue to, uh, to support their local sports clubs and seniors. I have some seniors in my ward. So if they didn't run bingos, they would not be able to run their seniors programming or the hockey or the baseball or swimming lessons. And it's so important. If we didn't have bingos and uh, not the opportunity for sports clubs and charities to run their bingos, they would be coming to the city of Toronto asking for grants, which as you know, we don't have the money to give, to fund all these organizations. Um, so I have been a big supporter of bingo for many years. As I said, I started over 40 years ago. I worked in a bingo hall uh, just to support myself and my son. And then my, when my son started swimming lessons, I couldn't afford the fees, so I had to run bingos. And so it goes on and on. So we have a lot of single parents that uh, have their kids in these organizations that can't afford it. And in order to do that, they apply for a bingo hall and they get their bingo license from the city GCO and they run regular bingos, which raise thousands of dollars. And there's been millions of dollars that have been uh, donated to charities in the city of Toronto, um, you know, to different uh, organizations and charities. So that's 
by not supporting this and not allowing bingo halls to exist and to um, have the charities uh, raise uh, funds and, and receive that revenue, that that would be a huge loss for the city of Toronto. That would be millions of dollars lost in uh, revenue uh, to help these local charities and senior groups. So I asked the committee, um, Delta Bingo went through the similar application. They got approved at committee. They came to council, we approved them. They're relocating now at Evans Avenue. So I'm asking that you support the application that you have before us for, um, for, um, for the bingo hall um, and, uh, you know, and support Dolphin because I know that I have a few charities in my ward as well that run their bingos um, at Dolphin. So thank you for your time and thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much, Councillor. A question for you. Uh, I want to make it clear that we understand that the bingo hall and the bingo operation is permitted here. What is not permitted is the electronics arcade. In the Evans Avenue application, do they have an electronics arcade? Yes. Okay. Yes, Thank they you. do. They Thank had you. it at their existing site in, at, at Evans, yes. Thank you very much. I just wanted that clarification for yeah. comparison purposes. Any questions from my uh, client, my members? Yes, Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, uh, I'm asking this question to a very illustrious, illustrious lady who is very well known to the public and stands for the public issues. Madam, we all love bingo. We want to have this game and sports in Scarborough. But main question is the location. Uh, as you are aware, it is not permitted in, a, in an area where it has been applied for. And also the zoning has been challenged by the transport services. If it is in your knowledge, how can one say that these are uh, acceptable charity uh, organizations and fundraising uh, system that we should look into? Well, the same issue was with Delta when they moved to Evans. Uh, city staff didn't support it, and they, there were the same issues, and they were approved by council. And that motion that I put through in 2021 was for city staff to look at it and amend uh, and come back with recommendations. So it was the same issue. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. The next speaker is Andrea Holmes. Is Andrea online? Yes. This is Andrea Holmes. Uh, my address is 54 Camp Cell Crescent. Uh, thank you so much for giving me some time today to support this application. Uh, I'm with Yorktown uh, Family Services. Yorktown is an accredited children and youth mental health agency and violence against women shelter and service provider. Our motto is you have come to the right place because we ensure that anyone who comes to Yorktown is connected to the mental health or social services that they require. Our programs and services are provided free of charge to ensure equitable access to support for anyone in need. We provide services in some of Toronto's most underserved and marginalized communities. We have three locations. One is the shelter, one is the infant child and family center, and the other is the West Toronto Youth Wellness Hub. Besides providing rapid access to, to mental health uh, therapy and ongoing therapy, we also provide some very unique and critical uh, group programs. We also provide community violence prevention programs that divert uh, youth. It's an intervention program that diverts youth and young adults from recruitment by extremist organizations, a very critical service in our communities these days. Another very unique program that we offer is the Male Child Advocate Program. It's a, uh, we were the first violence against women shelter to offer this. It's a male child advocate who is probably for many of our shelter residents, both women and children, the only positive male role model that they have in their lives. We also offer a, um, a mindful fathering program, which, I've, uh, which uh, is a prevention program. It uh, serves uh, fathers who have been abusive. It actually is a support for children by working with fathers who have been abusive. In many cases, these participants have never had a positive role model in their lives. 
one of our participants said the feedback is extremely uh, positive and one in, in the words of one of our participants, words cannot accurately capture how important it was for me to attend the program and create new and meaningful memories. It helped me to become the father I want to be and need to be. We also offer a very unique grieving program for children and youth who have lost parents. In many cases, it's through uh, due to drug overdose or suicide, which comes along with it numerous stigma that the grieving children have to deal with. Another program we have is a, a unique culturally sensitive program for black identified youth who are transitioning out of child welfare. Our, our referrals come from the justice system, the youth justice system, from primary health care, from hospital emergency departments, uh, from the Toronto District School Board. Um, we are in service for over 30 years. And I can tell you that this funding is extremely critical to us. It helps support our rent. And because of that, it supports these programs that I've mentioned and many, many more. I do hope that the council will approve this application. Thank you very much. Any questions? No, there's no questions from uh, the committee. Can we have the next speaker, uh, Franca Grill? Okay. Is it Mr. or Miss? We don't know. Sorry. Uh, would the uh, speaker identify themselves and give their address, please? Hi there. Um, my name is Franca Grilly, and I'm with Carita School of Life. My address is 27 Husband Drive in Toronto. Um, Caritas has been around uh, for about 40 years. Um, the uh, revenue that is generated uh, through Bingo that supports our program serves roughly in any given year uh, 450 people. Um, we help men, women, and transitionally aged youth who struggle with um, mental health disorders. Um, we are a community-based uh, agency. The funds help us to uh, cover our costs of rent um, and psychotherapy primarily. Um, these individuals um, are referred to us uh, many and often times from local hospitals, notably Sunnybrook and Humber River. Um, we also help people divert uh, uh, court mandates. Um, our program uh, is holistic in, in nature. Um, we try to reestablish basic needs in one's life, such as uh, food hygiene, sleep hygiene, um, we uh, try to promote a home-like setting so that uh, we can start to, you know, sort of breathe some hope back into these individuals who are struggling. Um, we uh, are the recipients of approximately $11,000 monthly, which works out to about $132,000 uh, annually. Um, if we were to lose this income, I think it would be devastating. It would be devastating for uh, the agency, and I can't imagine how devastating it would be for uh, the families. Um, generally speaking, there's a big push to sort of um, eliminate gaps, um, and definitely this revenue is, is helping us to close some of these gaps where these individuals would not otherwise have the opportunity to have a roof over their head, let alone um, psychotherapy uh, services. So I hope in conclusion that uh, the Committee of Adjust and Adjustments does approve the application the requested variances today because these services are vital, not just ours, but obviously all the other services that uh, the Dolphin Bingo Hall is able to support. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of this agency, but most importantly, on behalf of the people that we serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? We have no questions. Would the next speaker, Chris Yakoto, is he online? 
through the chair. Chris is not going to speak, so we'll move on to Sasha. Okay. Is Sasha online? Sasha Ellis. Go ahead, please give your name and your address. Uh, it's Sasha Ellis, 720 Bathurst Street. Proceed, sir. Did you get that? Sorry. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Pr go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Scarborough Committee of Adjustment. I am the Executive Director of Project Canoe, a grassroots organization focused on providing youth barrier free access to unique outdoor experiences. Uh, since 1970s. Did we lose connection? Through the chair, we are going to call Sasha to tell him we've lost connection, and I guess for now we'll move on to Cheryl. Okay, we'll go on to Cheryl, and then we'll come back to uh, Sasha. Is Sarah, uh, sorry, is Cheryl Landy online? Okay, Cheryl Landy, would you go ahead, please give your name and your address. Cheryl Landy, 36 Overbrook Place, Toronto. Thank you, Madam Chair and Scarborough Committee of Adjustment. I'm the, I'm the di Director of Community Engagement for B'nai Canada. B'nai Canada is a not-for-profit human rights organization that was created in 1875, 150 years ago, to provide need for those to, to provide help for those in need. We have a clothing donation program where we have bins around the city that allows us to collect clothing for seniors and families in need, which we give away at regular intervals uh, to over 130 social agencies in the city. We provide clothing to seniors, new immigrants, war veterans, individuals with disabilities, and those who are living below the poverty line. As well, B'nai B'rith has a 24 seven hotline for reporting anti-Semitism, as well as a human rights organization. We look after all those who are in need. We have three affordable housing buildings, which are subsidized, <clears throat> excuse me, for those <clears throat> living below the poverty line. We have daily seniors programs that include exercise, social activities, and recreational activities. We're currently building a party room for seniors who have a need to connect, especially during times of COVID. We also, due to COVID, have created a food bank specifically for seniors who are homebound and unable to get out. We deliver boxes of food on a weekly basis to over 170 families of seniors every week. And last but not least, we have an, expen a, an extensive sports program in offering pickleball, baseball, and basketball. I'll just uh, mention uh, one of the just a short story about the seniors we deliver food to. Our volunteers uh, who deliver our food every Thursday go into the homes of seniors, many of whom have not seen anybody interacted with people or been able to get out through the week and the volunteer is the only person they see. But Abris reaches over 40,000 community members on a weekly basis and affect the lives of many during these difficult financial times. 
Should we lose this license, we stand to lose approximately $12,000 a month, which you already heard from another agency. All our volunteers at bingo halls, at our bingo hall, are seniors. It is the highlight of their time. We get four times a year, uh, four times a month for two volunteers to come out to the bingo hall to assist in this money. B'nai B'rith has been involved in bingo for more than 50 years. It has helped us build affordable housing buildings that we currently uh, allow seniors to live in. In conclusion, should we lose this funding, we would be forced to drastically reduce our programming and support to the most vulnerable members of our community. We ask that the Starboard Committee of Adjustment approves the application and variances requested today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. I want to ask uh, the applicant or the person in favor that there are four variances in front of the committee is the person uh, speaking now is aware the uh, those four, four uh, variances what they are yes i am H have you seen them i do believe i have yes thank you madam any other questions no okay thank you very much is uh, mr ellis back on Okay, Mr. Ellis, we're going to yes, start. Thank you. Sorry about that. We'll start all over again. You get a whole five minutes. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm Sash Ellis, uh, 720 Bathurst Street. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Scarborough Committee of Adjustment. I'm the Executive Director of Project Canoe, a grassroots organization focused on providing youth barrier free access to unique outdoor experiences since 1977. Our programs foster learning, confidence, and transformation. We offer youth ages 13 to 18 from all over Toronto a variety of programs ranging from hikes at Rouge National Urban Park to five, eight, and 14-day canoe trips in Algonquin Park. Our programs are all provided with a high level of staff support and a low level of financial barriers. I'm reaching out today to voice my support for the variance application for the property located at 756 Warden Avenue. We are incredibly grateful to have Dolphin Gaming as an integral member of our supporter community. The funds raised by Dolphin Gaming are invested back into the community uh, for numerous beneficial programs, including our barrier-free outdoor-based programs. These funds allow us to provide services without any financial restraints to youth and their families. Last year, we were able to subsidize 96% of youth in our programs, 88% of that being full subsidies with the help of Dolphin Gaming. In the wake of the pandemic, the need for our programs has grown exponentially. The funds provided from Dolphin Gaming allowed us to triple our urban offerings last year, giving 116 youth the opportunity to explore outdoor settings in their own communities throughout the year. Without these funds, we would be forced to drastically scale back our programs, removing the majority of the canoe tripping elements. This is not a reality we want to acknowledge. We are here today to encourage your support and ask that the Scarborough Committee of Adjustment approves the application. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Stinson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sir, did you say 160 youth? 116, 116. Thank you. Any, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. I have come to the end of our list of speakers. Would the, um, the applicant and the owner, would you, sir, come back down to the podium? Now you have a five minute rebuttal. Uh, have you discussed with the, the planner as to whether you want to share it or whether you want to uh, speak the full five minutes? No, I haven't discussed it now. Okay. Uh, 
how about we let you go ahead and what, whenever you stop, we'll let your planner continue on for the, the remainder of the five minutes. Is that fair? Sure. I don't really have a rebuttal. There was... You don't have a rebuttal or do you want her to speak? I'm sorry. She could speak. Sorry. Do you, uh, do you want to speak in rebuttal or do you want to have the planner speak? The planner could speak. Sure. Oh. <clears throat> Hello again. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a bit of a cough. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. Uh, so through you, uh, Madam Chair, we really appreciate uh, the comments today and the questions. Just a few points of clarification I want to reemphasize that were alluded to in our presentation. So firstly, regarding the, uh, the appropriateness of electronic gaming to supplement the existing permitted bingo hall use. So really what we want to emphasize is the electronic gaming component is really just introducing another way in which patrons of the bingo hall can play bingo. So currently it's used on handheld electronic devices and paper bingo, but really this would just be a standalone electronic machine to again, enhance the experience of patrons and also to continue with the existing permissions already on the site. Additionally, um, it was noted that the site is within an, the general employment area. So general employment areas are characterized in the official plan as being on the periphery of employment areas. And really their intent is not to draw people into the core employment areas where there's heavy industrial uses. Um, within the, the existing Dolphin Bingo is also within the general employment area. Um, and again, the electronic gaming use was uh, permitted on that site through a previous committee of adjustment decision. Um, Given that the site is on the periphery, again, patrons will really just be coming off Warden Road into the site, and then they won't be going further into the employment area. So that's something else we wanted to characterize. Additionally, under section 2.4 of the official plan regarding employment areas, there is an emphasis on protecting employment lands for current businesses. So as mentioned, Dolphin Gaming has, and as you've heard today, has a really significant role in the community um, in terms of the support it provides and it's merely just relocating uh, their existing building to a new site down the street, um, which again, the variances requested um, are similar to what their existing permissions are. I'd also like to clarify only three re three variances are being requested. I know there was mentioned about four, the three being permitting electronic gaming, the restaurant as an ancillary use, which again, restaurants are also permitted in the OP. And in this case, will really just support patrons of the bingo hall as with the existing site. And the last one is providing parking on Comstock Road. So again, the site is bordered by three roads, despite having the warden address, staff indicated that Comstock is the front yard. And the way the site is situated is really to um, best respond to the site conditions and allow for, and with screening opportunities for this parking to be down the line. Again, it's in keeping with other sites in the area, which also have parking in the front yard. Um, <clears throat> the fourth, sorry, the fourth and final, uh, or maybe third in point is precedent. So while um, there have been other instances where staff have been um, unsure about the appropriateness of electronic gaming use through subs through OMB decisions for the existing Dolphin Bingo and other sites, uh, the board did state that uh, the introduct. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that they did state that electronic gaming is really an extension of the bingo hall use. And again, it's really just uh, it's uh, really just updating and modernizing the existing facility to meet the realities of today. Um, and so I think that's it in terms of my comments. Paul, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add. I know I kind of flew through that, but we thank you for your uh, time okay, today. Thank you, Paul. You've got about a minute and a half. Uh, no, I'm good. If you have any questions, I can. You're answer. okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then thank you very much to uh, all the speakers. Um, committee members, do you have any questions? Yes, Mr. Stinson. I'd like to ask, thank you, Chair. I'd like to ask the agent, um, are you familiar with the Transportation Demand Management Plan? Uh, I believe so. We did. I don't believe we received any comments from transportation. Okay. It, it seems to me there's some correspondence that deals with uh, a possibility of uh, should this committee decide for the application that the, you and your client would accept the transportation demand management plan? 
to accept and submit that? Uh, yes, I don't. I don't foresee that. Sorry, through you, Madam Chair, I don't foresee that being um, an issue. And again, I want to emphasize we aren't. We are meeting the parking requirements um, on the site. But again, yeah, I believe we'd agree to any conditions that require additional information. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, then we'll take this matter into committee. I have some comments to make. Um, as I understand it, what we're talking about is the addition of electronic games to our uh, approval of uh, a use being a bingo hall. And so the only thing we're really talking about is, is electronic games uh, an appropriate use to add to the bingo hall at this particular location? Looking at the location, it's on Warden Avenue, and I know that it is, uh, the site is a fairly large site with a frontage on Comstock, on Warden Avenue, and on Hymas. But it is, and I figured it was about half a mile from the existing location at Warden and Eglinton. In, a, in any case, Warden is a major arterial road, and so it's uh, appropriate that a use that has a lot of parking as uh, this use, whether it be just the bingo hall or the bingo and the electronics, be on a site that is available for a lot of parking. We do not have a parking variance. What we have is a parking location variance. And given that it's on three main roads, one of them has to be considered the front road. So I don't think there's any issue with the, the parking variance. In terms of the electronic games, I've spent some time looking at this. I've spent some time, we've got a number of reports from uh, the planners and from counselors who've looked at whether electronic games uh, should be permitted at this location. I'm uh, aware that uh, there was a study done four years ago as to adding uses to the industrial areas. Electronic games was not identified at that time from what I can tell, although um, it's not all the information I have. However, in my opinion, electronic games really is just like bingo. Whether you, you have uh, a bingo card or whether you push a button and play on a game, it's virtually the same thing. And I don't see that electronic games are substantially different from a bingo hall. So if a bingo hall is permitted, why isn't electronic games permitted? I think the only answer to the electronic games is simply that they're a newer use. Bingo halls have been around for 20 odd, 30, maybe 40 years. Electronic games have not been. And so it wasn't a use. Um, that's basically my comments here. Uh, I'm having some difficulty with this application in terms of what the staff and, and council have reported. They are recommending refusal. Um, I will shut up for a minute and let the other members of the committee comment. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, after listening to different people and uh, mostly organization and their representative from the big organization raising the issue of funding. Funding is important to run any organization and uh, I fully agree uh, they need resources and bingo is one of the contributor is uh, necessary for running all these organization. But my concern is that all these organizations are not in Scarborough, they are scattered all over the metro and elsewhere. Now, I would have been very happy to see the people coming out from the neighborhood of this particular location of this bingo hall, having electronic uh, stuff. And, this, uh, and also the transportation difficulties raised by transportation services. My concern is that this bingo hall, although it is needed, I would, 
I would be very happy to see it a proper location rather than a location which has been very close to the residential area as well as the collegiate and schools nearby and it will affect the young people and attract them and I think this attraction is one of the reasons that uh, people are looking into that their children should be going to the proper places and not spending their time away from the studies and schools. And secondly, the transportation hazard is a residential area close by and any traffic jams and also parking concerns should be t taken into consideration by the committee uh, before making a uh, resolution or motion about it. Thank you. Any other comments of the committee? Yes. Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks to all of the charities, uh, the people representing the charities who came. I think you gave very uh, important information. And as, as my fellow member um, Khan has said, that these are obviously supportable. Um, the, the bingo provides a lot of important impacts into the, the broader community. Uh, I'm having difficulty with this application. It's, it's very unusual that we get multiple refusal requests from different uh, city departments. And the, the one thing that is, is pushing me towards not supporting this application is the, the clarity in the OP around employment uh, use changes. And I think that um, it may be seen as a kind of academic way of looking at it, but it's, it is very clear. And they've just gone through the process and, and did not make this, this change to permitted uses. So I, for me, I can't see this as being um, meeting the purpose and intent of the official plan. And for that reason, I, I won't support it. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I, w I would agree with uh, Member Reed. This is, this is a difficult one, there's no doubt about it. Gaming creates revenue which helps a lot of agencies, many of whom we've heard from today. Many more we haven't heard from. But as Mr. Uh, Member Khan said early in this consideration of this application, nobody would argue that bingo halls aren't generally a good thing. The question is, uh, location has to be considered. And I agree with Member Reed that, you know, if, if there was some gray area here where we could truly in our hearts deem something to be minor, a minor variance, we obviously have the authority to do that. But like Member Reed, the language around the planning controls on this property, both the official plan and the zoning, they're very clear and explicit. And even though there was a motion at uh, City Council on November 21 to, to look at um, allowing bingo as a sort of an as of right permissible use, for whatever reason, two and a half years later, nothing's nothing's happened. We've got some very current reports in front of us from community planning, economic development and culture, and uh, transportation that uh, combined, as Member Reed said, you know, we rarely get three city departments recommending refusal of something. And when you carefully read and consider those reports, you get a, in my view, a strong feeling that we have no alternative but to refuse this application. So that's the direction I'll be, I'll be taking on this one. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Members of the committee, I think you've given some really good reasons here. Uh, I find it hard to refuse this application, but as members have said, we've got very strong reports from city staff saying to refuse this. I would assume that even if we refuse this application, it can be appealed. And I would assume that the applicant and the owner would probably appeal it. So I'm not sure that this is the end. Well, can we? Uh, the end of what the committee can do is we've got a variances that we have to look at in over all decide as to whether we would approve these variances or whether we'd refuse them. So, could we? Members, do I have. Uh, Madam Chair, could we no, defer? I'm sorry, we can't. 
Okay, do I have a motion? <sighs> Mr. Khan. Uh, thank you, Madam. <clears throat> After listening to a lot of people, and a lot of people are in support of the pr proposal, and uh, looking into the variances, four variances in front of the committee and in front of me, and uh, reading the recommendation from the transportation, as well as from the staff and other uh, agencies, I'm of the, I'm going to move the motion that this application and all the four uh, variances be refused. Okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Second that, please. Okay, moved by Mr. Khan, oh, seconded by Mr. Uh, Reed, that th this application be refused. All those in support of the refusal. All those in favor of the application. Thank you. The application has been refused. It has been refused by uh, four members and recommended approval by Mr. Stinson. Thank you very much. Thank Good you luck for your time. Your next steps, sir. Okay, I'm going to take a minute. My chair is wobbling here, and I want to get a proper chair. I think someone has been sitting and rocking back and forth in that chair. Okay. We now move on to item number three, which is 1143 Morningside Avenue. Is the applicant available? Good morning, committee. This is Peter Druza calling from Arc Design Group. Thank you. An application to permit some additional uses to 1143 Morningside Avenue. Um, staff have recommended that if this application be approved, that it be limited to Unit 3 only. Are you in a agreement to, to that recommendation, sir? I am, as that is my client's unit, and we have no subject to the other units, so we're fine with that. Okay, thank you. All right, do you have anything further you wish to say? Um, at this point, if the committee has any questions, I'm uh, willing to answer them. I think it's a very straightforward application, just requesting additional uses. Any comments? Any questions? Not seeing any, do I have a motion? Mr. Hahn. Thank you, madam. I'm taking the staff recommendations uh, for the approval of this uh, particular application that the additional use of per be permitted and be limited to unit number three at 1411-43 Morningside Avenue. Application be approved. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Chair. I'll second the motion. Uh, moved by Mr. Hahn, seconded by Mr. Stinson, that this application be approved and that uh, the approval be limited to Unit 3. All those in favor? That application is approved. Thank you very much, sir. We'll move on to item number 4. 161 Magnolia Avenue. In, um, Just a second, sir. Madam Chair. Okay. This is an application to construct a one story rear addition. And there are variances for coverage, building length, and building depth. The applicant um, 
Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to 161 Magnolia Avenue? No? Okay. Sir, uh, are you the applicant? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, can I have your name and your address, sir? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Munir Ahmad Jam, and uh, my address is 161 Magnolia Avenue, Scarborough. Okay. Your address is 151 Magnolia Avenue? 161. 161. Sorry. Thank you very much for yes. clarifying that. Okay, you have five minutes, sir. Is there anything you wish to add to you? Well, um... Thank you for giving me time. Um, so I'm living in this property since last 12 years and uh, my uh, kids are growing now. And one of my son, eldest son, he is getting married. We have only one washroom uh, in our house. So we want to construct uh, one room and uh, one washroom in the backyard because you know, I, I don't want to move to any largest larger space, larger house, because I don't have money to afford to buy another house. I want to live in the same house. So I want to construct, you know, just one room and one washroom in my backyard to fulfill the requirement of my family. So I would like to request if my application uh, should be approved, you know, I'll be thankful for that, please. Okay. Any questions of the applicant? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to the applicant, I want to confirm that um, you are deleting variance five. Is that correct? Variance five is the depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so there are four total variances with number five being deleted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other comments? I noticed that. Uh, Staff have recommended that if approved, that this uh, be tied to build substantially in accordance with the revision. We have Metrolink's comments as a warning, and we have an urban forestry condition. Okay. So, 161 Magnolia Avenue, do I have a motion? Thanks, Chair. Um, I think this is a reasonable application. I think especially with the removal of, of the one variance and and the slight modifications to the application, uh, particularly in the fact that it's a, it's a one-story addition to the back. I think that that goes to minimize the impacts that, that result from, um, from that length variance that's being requested. So I, I do believe the variances are minor and I move approval subject to the community planning conditions and urban forestry conditions. And I guess I should say as amended. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Horn? Thank you, Chair. Okay. I'll second the motion. Stinson? Okay. Moved by Mr. Uh, Reed and seconded by Mr. Stinson. Uh, all those in favor? Thank you. Your application is carried, sir, subject to the conditions. Moving on to item number five, 127 Claremore Avenue. I have the owner listed and no other speakers. Is the owner online? Ah, in the, in the come down to the podium, please. Okay, I have listed an Elliot Stamber and a Mitch Stamber, um, both as owners. Only one gets to speak for the first five minutes. Is that going to be you, sir? Through the chair, just to clarify, um, both people can speak for the full five minutes. It's about the rebuttal. It needs to be shared. Okay. All right. Uh, did you understand that? Both of you can speak for five minutes. Only one of you can uh, give us a rebuttal. 
or you can share the rebuttal as you heard from the previous time. Okay, Mr. Stanburn, um, do you wish to uh, give us a, present, a short presentation? Certainly. Good morning, Madam Chair and committee members. My name is Mitchell Stambler. My address is 127 Claremore Avenue. Our house at Claremore Avenue is a classical post-war strawberry box bungalow. It's very pleasant, but kind of small. And unlike other houses on the street, it, we have no garage. We'd like to build a shed in the backyard in order to create some space for storage and to have a bit of a workshop. The best place to put the shed would be at the very rear of the backyard. Uh, that's because at the very rear, it's not very usable space and not for gardening or recreation or whatever. And the reason that it's not a usable space, ironically, is that it's surrounded by other people's sheds. If you take a, a look around from right to left in our backyard, you can easily see 12 other sheds in close proximity to our backyard, the largest of which are immediately behind our backyard, consisting of a three-car garage and a single-car garage immediately adjacent to our rear. So it's not very usable space at the very rear, and um, so that is where we would like to be able to build a shed. We asked an architect to design one. He did. And as you can see from the staff's comments, that design intended to make the best use of that space is 3% larger than is allowed under the bylaw. And it results in a total coverage of the lot, which exceeds the bylaw by 2%. So these are the minor variances which this shed would entail, and those are the variances for which we are seeking approval. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Finster. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your presentation, sir. Uh, the conditions by urban forestry, would you abide by them? Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, does the, the other gentleman wish to speak before we go? No, Madam Chair. Okay. Do I have a motion? Mr. Taylor. Yes, Madam Chair, I'm satisfied that the three variances uh, requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval subject to urban forestry conditions two and three. Okay. I'll second the motion. Mr. Okay, I'm moved by Mr. I will second the motion. Moved by Mr. Don. Moved Don by Taylor. Mr. Taylor, thank you. And seconded by Mr. Hahn. Yes. Approval subject to urban forestry conditions. All those in favor? Okay, that motion is carried. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, our next item is item number 12, uh, item number six, 12 Cliss Crest Drive. I'm assuming that we have a number of speakers there. Is the applicant in the, in the audience? No, the applicant is online. Those in the audience, uh, just raise your hands. And, okay, we'll get to you, thank you. We also have a number of, I guess we have um, just one virtual speaker as well as the people in the audience. Okay, so it's 12 Cliff Crest uh, Drive. It's a new second story detached dwelling and it has a number of variances. Let me just get my thing here. Okay, if the applicant, uh, would you give your name and you have five minutes. Hi, Madam Chair and uh, committee uh, members. 
Can I have your name again? My name is Nushin Mozafari from Hyphen Studio, representing my client, owner of 12 Cliffcrest Drive. Thank you. And your address? 3429 yeah. Yonge Street. Thank you. All right, you have five minutes to proceed. Uh, if I want to give you a brief presentation, first of all, I uh, want to mention that this case has been before committee uh, on uh, February 14, and it was deferred, so we uh, had a chance to review all the uh, concerns of the neighborhood and uh, uh, had the chance to revise the drawing and improve the case by removing the variances for the soft landscaping, the variance for the number of platforms at the rear, and removing the variance for the number of a story, and also reducing the GFA from uh, 541 to 415 uh, a square meter. And what uh, the committee have uh, in front of uh, you uh, today, we are requesting for a uh, floor space area uh, and uh, the lot coverage, the allowed lot coverage is 33%. We are asking for 39.1. Uh, the area of the balcony on the second floor at the rear is a variance uh, and we are asking for almost uh, seven square meter instead of four allowed. Uh, and the rear ditch uh, projection from the rear wall is 4.52. Uh, and it's a variance because of the height of the ditch being uh, more than 1.2 meter. The height and wall height are also uh, a variance and it's uh, the wall height is only uh, eight inches more than a load and the total height is 9.5 uh, where the nine meter is a load. Uh, variance number seven is for the height of the first floor which is only eight centimeter more than a load. Uh, just manage the number of steps inside and outside of the building. And the last one is for the length which is only for the uh, one story extension that we have at the rear uh, and uh, it's uh, only for half of the building uh, feet and the rest of the building mass is uh, in compliance of uh, 17 meter allowed length. Uh, I believe this is a very straightforward uh, application and we try to improve the uh, proposal and remove some of uh, the variances and come back here. And I would be happy to answer any questions or uh, hear the comments of the uh, neighbor. Okay. Do I have any questions from committee to the applicant? Okay, no questions at the moment. Would the members of the audience please come to the podium? Come on down, all of you, and there's some seating uh, at the front there. Okay. I have the owner listed as Mr. Sanini. Is that you, sir? No. Is the owner here? Through the chair, the owner is online. Ah. Okay, so we had the agent online. All right. I'd like to take the owner online uh, next, please. But the owner, Mr. Sanichi, would you um, please proceed? Good morning, uh, committee and uh, honorable chair. Uh, I just want to take, uh, I won't take too much of your time. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Can you give your name and address? Perfect. I need your address again. Yeah, my name is yeah, my name is Amit Saini from 12 Cliff Press Drive. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to share that um, I know our uh, architect has already mentioned um, the variance that we've requested with regards to uh, the construction of this new home for our family. Uh, I've been a longtime resident um, of the Southwest Scarborough community and the Bluffs in particular. 
And um, we, before we even started this process, we had reached out to the neighbors, you know, explained to them that we plan on moving into the neighborhood, building a new home and, um, you know, let them know about our plans. And subsequently, a few neighbors reached out to us, you know, mentioned that um, they had uh, some concerns and which is why we deferred our initial, initial uh, hearing in February to address some of the concerns that they had raised. Um, and even from the, the initial meeting that we went door to door to try to, to speak with everyone, we had sent a letter of, you know, with clear communication with regards to how they can contact us to speak with us, whether a phone number, email, um, and only one person reached out till today to actually uh, discuss their concerns with us, which is the immediate neighbors. Uh, nobody else reached out to us till date to actually address any of the con concerns other than the letters that they have submitted online, of course. Um, we knew num like numerous occasions have gone to try to get feedback from them and uh, in order to understand what they're looking for. And so we addressed many of those uh, concerns actually with our revised application. And uh, I think uh, a lot of the uh, all the variances that we're asking for are very minor in nature, um, given what's already been developed in the neighborhood in terms of other homes uh, and the coverage and the, the massing of other home, newer built homes in the neighborhood. Uh, and um, our architect, you know, I, I'm, I look forward to hearing the concerns of the neighbors and, uh, you know, um, you know, we'll be able to address anything that uh, they, they have in terms of questions and uh, during the time of a rebuttal. Um, so I just want to share that information in addition to what the, our uh, architect has already shared. Okay, thank you very much. I have a question of you. My notes say that you are also the owner of Ken Cliffcrest Drive. Is that correct? No, that's that's incorrect. Okay, all right. Uh, perhaps uh, the um, the applicant uh, also uh, represented Ten Cliffcrest Drive. I'll take uh, that back. That you're the owner of no. That's a, that's an entirely entirely different uh, property. Okay. Thank you very much for that clarification. Any other questions, Mr. Thompson? Yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. I have a question. Um, sir, you just mentioned that uh, you you believe that the um, with respect to variances one and two, floor space index and coverage, that there are many homes or words to that effect on the street that uh, your house, uh, proposed house is similar to. Can you give us some specifics on um, lot coverages that exist on these new builds and floor space index uh yeah so i um i believe our architect has submitted uh, supporting documentation uh with regards to um, other builds other homes in the neighborhood with that have i'm not sure if you guys have that documentation in front of you but it's a supporting documentation that was submitted um that had several cases where the um uh, floor space index uh, sorry, the lot coverage was higher than even the 39% that we we're uh, requesting. And in fact, there was a home directly on the same street, just about uh, at the end of the street, which was also uh, approved by committee at 38.8% uh, uh, coverage. Um, and there's some other ones that are over 40% lot coverage as well in the uh, immediate uh, surrounding neighborhood as well. Uh, that 44 Scarborough Crescent is right at the end of our the other end of the street, uh, which has 44% lot coverage. Uh, and this also this chart also um, breaks down some of the approved heights variances that have been allowed for homes in the immediate neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, there it is. Yes. Ms. Dinson. Thank you, Chair. Sir, can you tell me the um, just confirm for me the the space between this proposal and the neighbors on the side, on the sides? Um, uh, if I may, yeah, can our uh, architect um, answer that uh, question for you? Sure, go ahead. To the architect. Uh... Yes. If you mean the setback of uh, our proposal, we have three foot setback on the uh, west side and five foot setback for, on the east side for the uh, majority of the building and uh, only a portion of the second floor 
uh, which is cantilevered is at three foot setback, uh, which is uh, the allowed setback in this uh, designation. So we don't have any side setback variance. And both neighbors on uh, each side have uh, almost four feet setback. So the distance between our uh, proposal and the west neighbor is almost seven feet. And our distance between uh, our proposal and the east neighbor is almost nine feet. Thank you. Any other questions of the speaker? No? Okay. Give me your name and address, please. Yes, good morning. My name is Luke Chamberlain, and I live at 14 Cliffcrest Drive, directly next door to the east of the proposed site. Thank you. Okay, so thank you to the panel for hearing our concerns and for the concerns and objections voiced by Councillor Parthi Candival, MPP Dolly Begum, and the surrounding neighbors. I would ask that my letter dated March 25th please be pulled up. It's letter of objection number 17 posted on the city's website. Like many of our neighbors, we moved to this neighborhood 30 years ago from a denser part of Toronto because this neighborhood has a healthy balance with green space. Not all neighborhoods are the same. The Cliffcrest neighborhood retains this balance, which would be lost if these variances are approved. Of the broad list of variance requests, some are certainly more egregious and impactful than others. Of particular concern is the proposed floor space of 415 square meters, that's almost 4,500 square feet, which is 49% above the bylaw. Coupled with the immense lot coverage and extended depth, these are not minor variances. Please see figure two on page three in my letter, which shows the proposed huge wall down the western side of my backyard. Figure three shows how much the proposed structure towers over my one and a half story house. We spend a lot of time in our backyard and the proposal significantly impacts our quality of life. There would be a loss of views and openness, so no more sunsets. Increased shadow on the backyard deck, so summer afternoons and early evenings would always be in shade. Perennial beds would lose much sunlight. There would be a loss of privacy. We currently have a closed in oasis. Visitors constantly marvel at how much privacy we have. That would be destroyed with the high up windows next to the property line looking down on us and the loss of established trees and shrubs. The immense size of the proposed property would impact trees in terms of canopy growth, available sun and root systems damage during construction because of proximity to the property line. If you look at the letter from the Cliffcrest Scarborough Village Southwest Residents Association, attachment three highlights that both the proposed gross floor area and floor space index substantially exceed what's allowed and what is characteristic on this portion of Cl Cliffcrest Drive. The proposed house is simply too big. If the floor space variance is rejected, as well as the lot coverage and building length, and these impacts would be reduced. Councillor Candival indicates, given the, brev the breadth of the community concern, I request that the com committee give appropriate and meaningful weight to these impacts in rendering your decisions. And NPP Begum indicates that the residents hope that a balance can be found that meets their needs for privacy, as well as existing views from their homes, green space, and shade. Now, speaking briefly about the deferral request that was granted on February 14th, the applicant noted that they wanted an opportunity to address the neighbor's concerns, which, has, which was taken as, as an expression of goodwill. I left the meeting hopeful that the applicant would reach out to us or any of the neighbors who had expressed concern about the size of the proposed building. If you look at figure nine in my letter, you note, in green, most of the surrounding neighbors who wrote personal letters, not form letters, objecting to the first proposal and reiterating their objections in new letters to the size of the updated proposal. There has been no change to the size of the above ground proposal in length, width, or height. The basement is to be dug deeper simply to get around the three-story variants. Councillor Candival writes in his second letter after the deferral that his Concerns remain about the variances for floor space, lot coverage, and building links. The applicant did not reach out to me after the deferral. I personally reached out to him, invited him into my home to ensure he understood our concerns. 
Although our discussion was civil, he expressed no intent to change the proposal. Simply wanting relief from existing bylaws does not satisfy the applicant's obligation to show burden of proof. Panel members, we welcome neighborhood renewal that fits into its prevailing character. I ask that the current set of variance requests be rejected. The applicant can then choose to come back to the surrounding neighbors, engage in goodwill discussions, and offer meaningful change in a new application. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the speaker? No. Seeing done, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. <clears throat> Give your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Margaret Hugavin, and I live at 14 Cliffcrest Drive, along with Luke and my daughter, Adele. Okay, thank you. You have five yeah. minutes. Okay, uh, please bring up the second page of the applicant's supporting documentation, uh, showing the side setbacks. After that, I'll be referring to figures eight and one in objection letter one, uh, sorry, objection letter 17, thank you. My husband has uh, fairly expressed our mutual views. I'd like to uh, speak specifically to lot coverage. Uh, the 39.1% uh, uh, request uh, rather than the 33% that is permitted. Test number one, would excessive lot coverage have just a minor impact on the neighbors? Well, to build a house with excessive lot coverage leaves no wiggle room for accommodating trees along the property line because of the need to use as much width as possible. This plan appears to be designed for a lot without trees. At more than 62 feet long, the proposed build is more than twice as long as our house. Add the 21 foot wide staircase leading out of the basement level and the construction is sure to harm a clump of three mature trees along the property line in the backyard. I realize that the protection of trees is not something that the panel decides. However, these trees would serve as excellent screening between the two backyards, so their destruction would also destroy our privacy and enjoyment of our backyard. Excessive lock coverage also threatens a mature grove of high house, sorry, house high cedars between the two houses. On this view uh, that's up there now, uh, if you can see the blue zone, this section of the second story, the Okay, it was up there a moment ago. Uh, that section of the blue zone on the, the blue zone on the second story is one meter away from the property line, and the roof comes within 18 inches of the property line. The cedars currently occupy the space of this proposed second story. The applicant has told me personally that he will try his best to preserve these trees, and I believe he is sincere but I don't think he can save these trees if the current plan goes forward. I think the builder knows this, which is why they have requested it to destroy a protected tree. Please deny the request for additional lot coverage. We respectfully ask the applicant to save the trees along the property line by choosing not to build so close to them. Please bring up figure eight from objection letter 17. Test number two. Would excessive lot coverage fit with the neighborhood character? If you see, this is a little visual of the uh, ravine, uh, the ravines in the neighborhood. Perhaps some of you are unaware of the unique situation of our local neighborhood, nestled among ravines and right on the edge of the lake. You can see in this diagram that protected ravines virtually encircle the clutch of houses surrounding 12 Cliffcrest to the east, west, and south. Please bring up figure one from objection letter 17. Some, lo some large homes have been built on our street, but most of them are on ravine properties, which are universally larger than the non-ravine lots. Let's compare the size lots on Cliffcrest. In this diagram, the lot at number 19 on the south side is 150% of the size of the lot at number 12. It's the same for all the lots along the south side. These much larger lots can more easily accommodate large homes while having less impact on wildlife and trees. And neighbors too, because the ravine lots drop steeply down a cliff. The character of the neighborhood stems directly from the ravines that surround us. 
Although some homes like ours back onto a block, the backyards are typically spacious, wildlife exists alongside us. Our neighborhood is a buffer zone for wildlife such as foxes and deer between their main habitat in the ravines and the concrete covered strip on Kingston Road. This role and our neighborhood's character will be weakened if the variance is passed that would permit excessive lot coverage of our collective green space. Test number four, would excessive lot coverage maintain the intent of the city's official plan? As it happens, the green character of the neighborhood is very much in line with the priorities set out in the city's plan. I was interested to read one of the city's goals in chapter 3.4, quote, protecting Toronto's natural environment and urban forests for should not be compromised by growth, insensitive, insensitivity to the needs of the environment or neglect. Well, the request for accessible, please. I realized the applicant has grown up in our neighborhood and walked to school through one of the ravines, as did our children. We welcome him back. We simply ask him to build a home that will maintain the qualities of the neighborhood he loves like we do. Thank you for listening to our views. Thank you very much. Any questions of the applicant? No? Okay, next speaker, please. Hello. Uh, my name is Diane Evans. I live at 9 Highcliffe Crescent. Can I have your name again, please? Diane Evans. Oh, okay. And you live at 9... 9 Highcliffe Crescent. Okay, go ahead. I've been residing at 9 Highcliffe for the last 17 years, and I've been in the neighbourhood for 30 years. My property is directly behind 12 Cliff, Cliff Crest. Therefore, the rear of my house and backyard will face the rear of the proposed building. I have a southeast view from the back of my house. My privacy, views, and sense of openness will be negatively impacted. Variance 3 states the bylaw for maximum area of the second story platform is 43 square feet versus requested size of 75 square feet. This is almost double the size allowed. How is this a minor variance? A bigger platform means it will be more desirable to use and will accommodate a greater number of people. Since the second story platform will be situated at the rear, there will be more people looking directly into my backyard and into the rear of my house. And it is, it is not just my yard they would be looking down on, but all neighboring yards. This is a huge infringement of our privacy. Variance four states the bylaw for maximum height above the ground of the lower rear platform is 3.9 feet versus requested height of 5.7 feet. This is close to 50% more than the height allowed. This allows people sitting and standing on the platform to easily see over the existing back fence right into my backyard. My neighbor beside me to the west at Seven High Cliff could not be here today. However, this is also one of his concerns. A portion of his property backs onto 12 Cliff Crest. Variance eight states the bylaw for maximum building length is 55.8 feet versus requested length of 62.2 feet. This is 11% longer than allowed. In conjunction with exceeding allowable floor space and lot size, as per Luke and Marnie, sorry, Luke and Margaret have already discussed, allowing a longer building further enhances the feeling of being towered over. The proposed building will be that much closer to my, to my backyard. Again, my privacy will be jeopardized and I will be on display. The sense of openness I experience today will be lost. Privacy is defined as a state of being free from being observed or disturbed by other people. The variance I have variances I have referred to will facilitate being observed. I like to garden out back, entertain family and friends on my back deck and simply enjoy the solitude of being in my backyard. 
I think it is fair to say the majority of us cherish and value our privacy. I spend much more time in my backyard than in my front yard for that very reason. That is my private space. I've never had to worry about people constantly seeing me. It is unnerving and, to be honest, a bit eerie when you know others can see and watch you. In his March 21st letter to our MPP, the architect representing the applicant writes, quote, we have made sincere efforts to engage with all stakeholders, unquote. Given that my property is behind 12 Cliff Crest, I believe I am an obvious stakeholder. However, no one reached out to me to address my concerns. I accept that a new house will be built on 12 Cliff Crest. However, I have nothing to gain from the development of what is being proposed. The term minor variance implies to me that the variance is of little significance or importance. I cannot stress enough that the invasion of my privacy and the loss of the enjoyment of my backyard is, is extremely significant and important to me and also to my fellow neighbors. I ask that you minimize the impact of what we have to lose by enforcing the bylaws and not approving variances one, two, three, four, and eight. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your presentation. Can we go back to the photo that you had us bring up uh, with the red line uh, view of your backyard to the proposed site? Thank you. Was there a second photo? There is a second photo. I think I'd like to see the second, if you don't mind. There it is. Just be clear for me, please, and this committee. To the right, as I face my screen, the red line touches a roof. I believe it would be 10. Yes. Yes. That is, um, that's 10 Cliff Crest. Right. Which? So that red line touches that roof at 10 Cliff Crest. Has there been an impact on your privacy from that address? Uh, we haven't had a full summer yet with that building there, so I will know better starting this summer, but as of this time, not yet. Except just to see the, the huge structure. So a bit my views to, the, to the, the west, but directly in front of me, I can still see, um, as you can see, I can see a portion of the lake and I can see all those trees. And that's looking straight ahead. Thank you very much. Any other questions? That was a good question. Uh, I had missed that you could actually see the lake from your property at yes. the moment. Yes, I can. OK. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker. Could you give your name and your address, please? Thank you, Madam Chair, panel members. My name is Doug Waters. I live at 19 Cliffcrest Drive, which is directly across the street from 12 and 14. I'm going to be talking uh, about a couple of figures in Objection Letter 17, but I'm going to start off with the applicant supporting material um, showing a list of properties uh, in and around the neighborhood with variances in coverage and height. Could I ask that that be turned up? So that green diagram, which was discussed briefly by the owner, um, shows a number of properties. All of those are in and around the area that was covered in the map of ravines, except for one. So there's a lot of ravines, and a lot of these places are in and around ravines. They're up, they're down, and so on. I'm not going to go through them all unless you would like me to, but I can tell you that of these 11 properties with three showing lot coverage exceedances and eight height variances, um, of the 11, four are at the bottom or top of a hill, 
three face on ravines, two face a park, two are on a slope, one is above the other, two are set back from or have neighbors set back from them, one is bordered on three sides by roads and a school. Now, this is 15, not 11, but some of them have multiple characteristics. Of the remaining four, number 10, Cliffcrest, and Madam Chair, I would invite you to inquire of the applicant whether 10 is owned by his brother or not. Um, and number 22, Cliffcrest, which was referenced, which is down the street on the north side, it um, is unbuilt as yet. 68 Cliffcrest is on a little bit of a curve, so its lot widens out onto the street. Um, so of the 11 properties mentioned by the applicants, seven are very different, and I know, or you know, that the tribunal is not bound by precedent, but it, and I think the reason for that is so that you can look at individual circumstances. Um, and my submission to you is that there are a lot of different circumstances here. And you can't take that chart and say this tells you a lot about what's going on in the neighborhood and what's established. Um, so I can go in briefly to what these variances are for. Uh, eight are for height, three are for area coverage. Of the area coverage, um, one of them mentioned by the applicant is definitely in a situation there's a setback in a hill. Um, the, the height variance is interesting because in and of itself, it's a fairly small variance request. But when you couple it with length of building and overall area, you get an idea of impact. And I think Diane Evans has just talked to you about a very clear impact um, on her property from the mass. Um, I want to move on to uh, my last topic, which has been touched on, and I won't go on about it, about burden and proof and consultation. In the applicant's um, application, there's a sentence that asks why uh, you can't comply with or why you can't uh, that comply with the bylaw. Now, the answer, and I'm quoting, is the desired design is not complying with the existing zoning bylaw. So that's it. I, I urge you to consider whether you've heard anything else in support of the variances. Um, there are a number of signatures of support from neighbors. I've written a letter, two letters, and covered them in those letters, but the only thing I want to say is that there's not, well, there's nothing in them, there's signatures. Um, maybe we'll hear from some folks uh, uh, virtually, but Madam Chair, panel members, I think leaving aside all of the submissions that have been made to you so far, if you just consider the quality of the application before you, it would be my hope that you would conclude that the burden of proof hasn't been met. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for this applicant? No? Okay. Thank you, sir. The next speaker. Can I have good, your name and address? Good morning. My name is Chester Nigel Krumis. I live at I live directly northeast to the new proposed development, at 12 Chris Cress, Cliff Crest Drive, and I concur with my previous object. I concur with, with my neighbor's previous objections about uh, about the, the the proposals. The variances are not minor, but in nature, they will affect us in a negative way. We live. It, we, we will have this town building overlooking into our backyard. We want our needs to be considered and cared for. We have a pool in our backyard and, our, and we will have our privacy taken away. The variance is too large and will not 
and is not to be considered minor. The development is incompatible with established homes. Sir, yes? can you speak a little uh, clearer into the mic? Okay. Thank you. Okay. The variance is too large and is not to be considered minor. The development is incompatible with established homes and the character of our neighborhood. It erodes the, it erodes the natural beauty of our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is worth, is worth deserving, uh, preserving and protection of our privacy. Uh, this development will take away spacing, privacy, and the natural sunlight. All these attributes give our neighborhood its natural and ecological beauty. The builder of this property is a builder that, that requested variances in 2021 for the new build at 1012 Chris Drive. The same builder now is requesting even larger variances for the property next door. With this excessive, with excessive floor area, large coverage, balcony size, and building length, with what will happen if these variances are granted? Will my neighbors at 14 sell their property and build, and the builder ask for even more variances to build even larger homes? Altering the, altering the character of the street so drastically, one property at a time is not desirable is not desirable, respectful, or inappropriate. Appropriate. In closing, we consider and support positive development in our neighborhood, but the request variances in this application are not minor and not within the prevailing character of our neighborhood. Though those of us who took the time and trouble to write a detailed personal letter of objection to this building plan all live very close to number 12. Many of us will directly adversely uh, affect by the new building should the variances be passed. The, ca the character of our neighborhood should be considered. That is why we respectfully request that the committee refuse this variance application. Thank you, for your, thank you for your time and the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the speaker? No? Okay. Next speaker. Are you Maria? Yes, and I choose not to speak, but, oh. I, but I agree with my fellow speakers. Okay, all right. And we have one final speaker, uh, Susan Watts. Through the chair, Susan will not be speaking today. Okay. All right. That is the end of the speakers, and I have no other speakers. Okay, back to the applicant. You have an opportunity to rebut. Uh, hi, Madam Chair. Uh, again, uh, as my client mentioned, uh, he attempted to uh, contact all the neighbors. We also have provided a sign uh, on the job site uh, with our contact info, and nobody contacted us. Uh, and uh, still, we uh, read all the uh, objective letters from the previous committee uh, carefully and tried to address uh, as many uh, concerns as we could. And uh, in the response of uh, the issues that the neighbors brought up, uh, first of all, uh, for the trees between our property and the neighbor on the uh, east side, those are uh, shared trees and we are also concerned about preserving them. Uh, that's why we have uh, more than required setback on that side. If you look at all the floor plans, the foundation walls and the main floor uh, have uh, five foot setback where the required setback is only three feet and only a portion of the second floor can deliver there and still we don't have any setback. We provided this uh, uh, extra setback there to make sure that we can uh, preserve the trees and uh, we will uh, work with the forestry to uh, file any uh, application for injury if it's needed. Uh, but our intention is to preserve the trees. Uh, for the lot coverage, I should mention that if you look at the uh, 
uh, proposed design. Uh, the form of the house is very articulated, and this lot coverage uh, includes all the projections on the second floor and also the rear projection for the breakfast area, although it doesn't touch the ground. Uh, and 33% uh, of this 39% uh, of lot coverage is uh, including those uh, those projections. Uh, still, if you uh, kindly go to my presentation material, we have a generous uh, rear set badge at the uh, back. And uh, if you can uh, show my presentation material, page one. Uh, if you see uh, the proposed rear setback, that uh, dashed line shows the required uh, required rear, rear setback of 9.5 meter, and we are uh, we have more than 14 meter rear setback, including that uh, extension for the breakfast area. And as you see, this building length proposed. Uh, around 19 meter includes two meter extension at the rear which I, which I ha have shown uh, on the 3d uh, on the, in the left uh, top corner yes that's the extra length that we are getting there is no space below this uh, space in the basement and there is no space on the second floor it's the balcony and we also have tried to put all the uh, uh, balconies and uh, to put the deck and also uh, the open view of the second floor balcony looking to the uh, west side uh, that uh, has uh, who is okay with our application uh, and uh, yes i believe uh, there is a uh, connection between the uh, these two owners i'm not sure if uh, if uh, he is the uh, brother of my uh, client or not but i know that there is a uh, connection uh, they, they are relatives uh, anyway uh, one uh, important point that i want uh, to mention is that there is a, a misleading comparison here uh, that all the neighbors are uh, mentioning, and uh, they are uh, just comparing the proposed versus existing. Uh, but the uh, true compar uh, comparison is between the proposed and the permitted. Uh, the permitted uh, uh, building envelope uh, is almost what we are uh, having here. We are not asking for any front setback, rear setback, or side setbacks. This extra length is just one story extension at the rear for half of the width, and the rest of the building mass is basically inside the uh, permitted building envelope. And Can you uh, wrap up, please? And also, uh, the planner of the uh, city is uh, supporting our application even the previous one was supported uh, with more variances and that's why uh, uh, because uh, it's uh, in keeping with the other approved cases in the neighbor and uh, i don't think uh, these variances cause uh, real actual uh, uh, negative impact on the uh, okay thank problems. you very much do I have any questions of the applicant? No? Okay, no questions of the applicant. Uh, then we'll move into committee. Any comments? Okay, I'm gonna make a couple of comments. I'm looking at um, some of the concerns that the community had and uh, uh, really, their, their concerns were the impact on the adjacent properties, especially in the rear. And so I noticed that we've got three variances that impact that. Uh, one is the building length. It's 18.95 meters versus 17 
Not a lot, but everything adds up. The height at 9.5 meters, as the community has said, does have an impact. And the last one is the platform on the second floor, um, which really intrudes into the privacy because you've got a, a 7.01 meter square uh, uh, a platform on your second floor. So when you listen to some of these people on um, High Clefts, Crescent, they are going to have an impact as well as the adjacent properties. So I'm just raising those three. I don't notice that uh, the applicant has not uh, revised any of those to my knowledge. Any other comments? Yes. Thanks, Chair. I'll just make a couple comments as well. Um, first, thanks to the neighbors for coming. Those were really good presentations, especially the, um, not especially, but the, the letters, the written letters that had the, the graphics in them were, were really helpful to understand the context. Um, I, I understand the, the concerns of the neighbors, um, but I, I do believe that this application is supportable. I think that the one, the one that I had a major um, concern with is the, the FSI, but I think that, that the impacts of that is lessened because there are no side yard setbacks front or rear uh, that are being requested. And looking at the other variances themselves, they, I think they are quite small in terms of number and impact, I think. I mean, I understand the concern about the balcony in the back, but I think it, these are pretty well-treed lots and that is coming from, that balcony comes from a bedroom. So I, I, I don't see that as being a kind of large gathering space that, that'll, that'll have large groups of people there. Um, yeah, this isn't an easy one, but I do commend the, the applicant for, for substantially improving the application from last time. And I, I think it's supportable. Okay, thank you. I should mention that community planning, I recommended that if this application is approved, that be tied to the building plans that we have. And there is also a comments from Urban Forestry. Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have listened to all the participants. I appreciate their presence and their concern. My concern has been, and I have been thinking all along, is variance number one which is the lot area. That is quite a bit than the maximum allowable, and that's only my concern. So I'm thinking and contemplating about it, how to react in the final motion. Okay. Any further comments? No. Do I have a motion then? Thanks, Chair. For the reasons I stated before, I move approval of the application subject to community planning condition and urban forestry conditions. Okay. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that motion, Madam Chair. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. The motion is carried. All those in favor have, uh, all uh, committee members have voted in favor of this application. Thank you very much. Thank you to the community for showing up. We appreciate your comments. Okay. We're moving on to item number. Yes. We'll move on to item number seven after. Do you want a break of 10 minutes or do you want a, what time is it? 12.30. Uh, do you want to take a lunch break or do you want to, no? So let's say a 15 minute break, come back at quarter to one. Okay, all right. We'll have a 15 minute break. We'll be back at quarter to one.
calling the committee back to order. Item seven is 30 Kenworthy Avenue. And I have the owner listed and two agents. Okay, 30 Kenworthy Avenue, the variance is to convert the front yard landscaping to an asphalt driveway and to permit front yard parking. Is the applicant online? Okay. Who do I have as the applicant here? Through the chair, Naomi, you've been unmuted. Noabi Jimenez Moran? Yes. 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 Hello, good afternoon. Okay. I'm the owner of Kenworthy. Okay. Um, okay. There is no one in the audience to speak to item number uh, 730 Kenworthy Avenue. Through the chair, you may wish to ask the owner if there are two applicants that are registered to speak. Um, you may wish to ask the owner if um, the agents will be speaking on the owner's behalf. Yes, the agents. Okay, the agent is going to speak and the owners will not necessarily be speaking? No. Okay, all right. So, you are the agent. This is an application for parking, and we have a comment from Transportation Services that they are satisfied with this application. Madam, do you wish to make a short presentation, or do you wish to answer questions? Through the chair, this you're speaking to the owner right now. Okay. To the owner. Do you wish to make a presentation? Hello? Okay. I have, I have Mr. Moran as the owner for 30 Kenworthy Hello. Avenue. Hello. 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 I have three names here. Who is speaking? Hello. Please. Hello. Are you listening to me? Hello. Yes, we, we can hear you. Yeah. Could you give us your name, please? Yes, hi. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm Hemapri and Harmandam here from Ashley Designers. I am, we have uh, talking about 30 uh, Kenworthy drive uh, about the parking space the our mic our client is looking for a parking uh, I just, uh, they don't have a parking spot in the in, in front uh, okay. uh, even though the zoning is not allowed but they, they definitely need a parking lot in the front of the house so there's no objection so far uh, raised by neighbors so we are looking for a, a council okay approval. okay thank you are you um, Jana? Or are you Dillo? Jana. You're Jana. Okay. So we have as, as applicant. I'm not sure I can pronounce your name, sir. But uh, Therma Martinin. I'm sorry. I'm really going to be uh, messing up that name. Is there any questions for the for the applicant? Yes, sir. Thanks, Chair. Um, just in regard to the the size of the parking space, can can you explain why it, it's really almost the entirety of the front yard that's being paved and, and much larger than an actual car space? And can you speak to why the why there is this extent of asphalt being proposed? Um, 
there is no not a specific reason for that. Uh, but if if it's not allowable, we can do that for the only one parking spot. We can adjust that. Okay, so if if you were to adjust that, I think you would have to give us the dimensions of that, the the width of the driveway. Um, do you know offhand what would be suitable, or what what you would, how low you would go for that? Yeah, we can go with the uh, uh, wider, wider, sir. Uh, ten, ten footer or twelve? Yeah. Ten footer, minimum I can go. We can do. What what would that be in meters? Can you give me the meters for that, please? Three meters. Three meters. Three meters. Okay. So, is are you then uh, amending your application, amending variance request number two to the proposed driveway width is three meters? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we understand that you have uh, revised your application, that the maximum driveway width, the proposed driveway width is 3.0 meters, whereas the required, the maximum required is 2.6. You're in, okay to do it in three meters rather than pave the entire front lawn, which would be a good thing to reduce sure. this driveway. Sure. Yes? Okay. All right. Um, do I have any comments from committee? Yes. Thank you, Chair. I, I think this is a pretty straightforward application. I do appreciate Member Reed's comments and, and the applicant's adjustment. So I, I'm quite satisfied with what the uh, background departments have asked us to consider, and that is urban forestry condition. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Do I have a motion? Uh, just, oh, yes. Oh, was that a motion, Member Stinson? No. Oh, okay. Through the chair, just um, a point of clarification. Is the um, amended application for variance number two, is it 3.0 meters or 3.2 meters? Can you, can, can you clarify that with the applicant, please? Okay, to the applicant, uh, can you clarify whether your uh, proposed driveway width is now 3.0 meters? 3.0. 3.2 meter also allowable is good for us, uh, even though the 3 meter is also fine. Okay. 3.2, we are, we are going with the 3.2 meter. Okay. You, ha you get the opportunity to choose, sir. Do you want 3 meters or do you want 3.2 meters? 3.2, please. Okay. Is that okay? All right, so the application has been amended to uh, the proposed driveway width is 3.2 meters, whereas the permitted width is 2.6 meters. And the parking space is in the front yard. Do I have a motion? Yes. Thanks, Chair, and thank you to the applicant for, for altering that. I think that, that makes this a much more supportable application. I, I note that on this side of the street, there are many front front yard driveways, and um, I think for that reason, with the, the lowered width, that this is this is an acceptable application. So I move approval of the application as amended, subject to urban forestry condition. Okay. I, I will second the motion. I will move. I will second. Approval by Mr. Reed, second by Mr. Hahn. Second by. All those in favor? Okay, that application is approved. Thank you very much, sir. The next application is application number eight, 1703 Pharmacy Avenue. I have just, uh, just the applicant, Mr. Saeed, is the applicant online? Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. This is Shamsayed, the applicant. Okay. Um, 
This is an application for a one-story rear yard addition, and you have a, a variance for building length of 18 meters versus 17 meters. Do you wish to provide any additional comments? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So this application before the committee is for us seeking a building length of 18 meters, whereas the bylaw requires and permits a maximum building length of 17 meters. To bring to the notice of the committee, since this is only a single floor addition, we are not having a second story on top of this, and we are still maintaining the setbacks to the rear yard and side yard, and also the lot coverage and the floor space index or cross floor area as well. So I believe this application is very minor in nature. The reason for this extension to the rear is to allow for a third dwelling unit in that specific area. And I would request the committee kindly consider and approve of this application. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. I note there is only one variance in this case, in spite of the fact that it seems as though we've got a fairly large development here. Um, do I have any comments from any? Yes, Mr. Stinson. Subject to the committee, Chair, thank you. Um, I find this meets the four test rule, and I, I do believe it is a minor variance. So from that position, I'd be willing to put forth a motion. Okay. And that motion is for? I would like to, Chair, put forth a motion to approve this application. Um, I think subject to? I'm just looking at that, yeah. No, can actually urban forestry. No, that's incorrect. So, nope, nope, nope. I am putting forth a motion to approve this minor variance application. Okay, I have a motion to approve from Mr. Stinson. A seconder from. I'll Mr. second that, please. Reed. All those in favor? That application is approved. So, sir, uh, application eight seventeen o three Pharmacy Avenue has been approved. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 926 Nielsen Avenue. Is the applicant online? Okay, 26 Nielsen Avenue. Just get there. Hello? Yes, just a second. Uh, my name is Joaquin. All right. Can I can I talk? Uh, no, just a second, sir. I'm just sure, trying, sure. trying to pull that up. Purpose of the application is to demolish the existing dwelling and to construct a new two-story detached dwelling. And your variance is for the proposed floor space index at 0 0.66 times the lot area, whereas the permitted is 0.5 times the lot area. Okay, sir, um, are you Mr. Kim? Yes. Okay, all right, we have Mr. Kim. Go ahead if you wish to add anything to your application. Mr. Kim, do you wish to add anything or do you just wish to answer questions? No. No, I'll, I'll answer any question, yeah. Okay, it's a fairly straightforward application, I think, here. Um, so the floor space index is fairly large. Any comments from the committee? Yeah, Mr. Stinson. Thank you, Chair. I just want to point out to my fellow committee members that this is a significant uh, piece of land and it seems to my observations that it's it's not uh, conflicting with the four test rule when you look at what's being proposed. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Do I have a motion? Mr. Hahn? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, only one uh, variance in front of us, FSI. It's uh, minor in nature. So I make the motion that application be approved with forestry conditions. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Mr. I'll, I'll second it. I didn't hear if the urban forestry condition three was part of the motion made. If not, I would yeah, include he, that. Yeah, he, he, he did state it. 
Okay, so. Then I will second the motion as, uh, as it was made. Thank you. Uh, motion for approval from Mr. Hahn, seconded by Mr. Um, Don. Taylor. You're going to have to change your thing around a bit. I keep on seeing it as Felix. I know that's wrong. Don Taylor. That's, we may have to change it just a bit better <laughs> for the cameras. But yes, I want to see the Taylor part of that. Sorry, that was a digression that I should not have taken. So we have a, a move approval by Mr. Hahn, seconded by Mr. Taylor, Hi. subject to uh, urban forestry conditions. All those in favor? That uh, item is approved. Thank you very much, sir. Moving on to item number 10. Item number 10 is 29 Thatcher Avenue. 39. Just pulling that up on my screen right now. Thirty-nine Thatcher Avenue. I have uh, an owner and an architect, and then I have one neighbor who wishes to speak on this. Right. So uh, the neighbor will have to speak on it, and my uh, architect is initially I have uh, the neighbor that works out of the shape of the building. And uh, she and my. Uh, uh, my architect, but I, I, I was cleared by the doctor, so I said, you know, I'll come in okay. and do it Are myself. you the owner, sir? Yes, I am the owner. Okay, so your name is Moses. Moses. Nyarko? Yeah, it's not bad. It's okay. good. Moses Nyarko. 39 Thatcher Avenue? Correct. Okay. So your architect is not going to speak, and your neighbor is also not going to speak. That's correct. Okay. All right. So this is an application... Ah, to construct a garden suite in the rear yard with a side yard setback, a number of setbacks, one on the south side, one on the north side, a rear yard, and an angular plane. Fitting. Do you want to do a presentation, sir? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, my name is Moses Nayako, and my address is 39 Thatcher Avenue. I own this property. I, um, I wanted to construct this garden suite. Uh, my uh, elderly parents want to move into the, um, to live with us. Um, they are not interested in living in uh, uh, senior homes. And uh, I figured we, we would, um, construct this to give them some space and also uh, since um, I live there I get to um, assist them. Okay. Do I have any uh, questions of the applicant? Mr. Hahn. Thank you Madam Chair. Through you I want to ask a very simple question about variance number four. You are mentioning angular plan does not comply side yard setback. What side yard you have in mind, sir? So, sorry, can you repeat that question again? The angular plane doesn't comply with the side yard setback. You are asking for a north side yard setback and a south side yard setback. Which one is affected by the angular plane? Oh, I, from my understanding, um, um, the uh, it will be it will be the the north. So you want to amend it? Well, basically, <clears throat> that that that's why I guess that's why I'm here to. Um, um, I have the north and the south. Sorry, can you repeat that question again? I want to make sure I I see you correctly. Okay, we're bringing the photo up uh, of your property. 
showing the um, cabana under construction, and I, and I assume that's where you're putting your uh, your dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. okay. So, one of your variances is for an angular plane. We're not providing an angular plane. Yes, angular yes. plane. And there, the question is, where, which, in the construction of your building, where is the angular plane supposed to be? Oh, that's, that's interesting. I'm not sure if angular plane. Okay, just, uh, just a second. Okay. I, I'm not great at angular planes either. So this gentleman who's asked for it, he may be able to explain what he's looking for. Okay. Go ahead. Sir, you are mentioning that angular plane does not comply. So you have to tell me which side of the angular plane is affected, affecting the variance. So you didn't mention the side north, south, east, west, front, back. So you have to tell me what side is affected. Oh, okay. So um, from my understanding from the uh, architect, uh, it's uh, basically the north side and then also, um, uh, it, it will be the north side because basically what we are asking for is to be able to go a little bit wider on the property than what um, I guess it's allowed. So you want to change to north side, right? Yes, I guess it will, it will be the north side. So um, I, I, from from what I read, we are allowed uh three feet, uh three feet on each side of our property but we we built we are going i think what we have now it's it's uh less than a foot so in in there should say that so kindly tell me that what side you are amending north i, I think it will be both sides both no, side. yeah i think in this case it will be both sides will be it will be the north south and then the back two which is which is the uh, east. So it will be all three sides. Sir, if I understand, you are amending to north and south, both sides, right? Yeah, all three sides. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, um, if that's the case, then um, the variances as requested are accurate. Okay. So the variances as requested are accurate. Um, Any other questions? No? Okay, do I have uh, a motion? Yes, Mr. Taylor. Yes, Madam Chair, I'm satisfied that the variances requested meet the four tests and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition number two. All right, do I have a second there? Thank you, Chair, I'll second that motion. Okay, all those in favor of the motion for approval? All those in opposition? Okay, that ma motion is carried. Four in approval and Mr. Hahn has voted in opposition. Thank you very much, sir, your application has been approved. Thank you. Moving on item number 11 to Doreen Crescent was deferred. And so we're now moving to item number 12, 34 Heather Road.
Okay. Item number 12 at 34 Heather Road is to construct a new two-story addition on top of the existing basement foundation wall and add additions to the rear and garage of the, of the dwelling. There are six variances proposed. Is the applicant available? Okay. Mr. Huang, would you identify yourself, give your address, and then you may proceed to make a presentation or answer questions. Uh, hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. My name is uh, Zi Wen, AT Fulton Way. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and the Scarborough Community, community, community of Adjustment. I am the architect on behalf of the owner at number 34 Heather Road. We are requesting the Committee of Adjustment to authorize a minor variance to permit the owner to construct more spaces to the existing bungalow. This existing bungalow was, was built in 1955. It is uh, 69 years old. The owner's family currently have two children. Within the current 1,100 square feet ground floor and partially finished basement, the four members of the family are having challenge living in this space. Moreover, the owner's parents are getting older that they will stay with them next year. For those patients just mentioned above, the owner decide to construct a new two-story addition on top of existing basement foundation wall and additions to the rear and garage of the dwelling. There are five minor variances, floor space index, building depth and length, driveway width, as well as the roof eave encroachment. Please note all the five variances are minimal and acceptable. We did receive the no objection letter from the transportation service decision and the comments from the community planning that they are recommending a condition that the approval be tied to the site plan submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. We also received two supporting letters from the adjacent neighbor, 32 Heather Road, and the neighbor across the street at 2654 Midland Avenue. We understand that there is an objection from the neighbor, 36 Heather Road, about the proposed garage setback. Please note the proposed 0.3 garage setback is permitted under the city zoning bylaw. We do not have any setback variance. Please also note the current proposed garage is only a single car garage. We do need the space for electric vehicle charging for the zoning bylaw. Finally, uh, we hope this uh, new design will bring more value to this neighborhood. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? I note that the community planning has suggested that we uh, attach the condition, build substantially in accordance. No questions for the applicant? Okay, we're in committee. Any comments? If not, then I have a motion. Mr. Hahn. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's a very straightforward application, and I'm taking the comments and recommendation made by the staff, uh, so I don't have to read, or should I read? So I'm not going to read, and the recommendation take, uh, made by the staff in their letter of March 22nd, 2024. If you say I will read it, the owner shall build substantially in accordance with the proposed site plan drawing. Through the chair, um, the you just have to say approved subject to community planning. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. And that is what I make the motion that it, it should be approved. Okay. So we have a motion for approval, seconded by Mr. Chair, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Your application is approved, sir. That was number... 
moving on to Um, I think we're going to try to deal with 13. Let me just see. Now, 13. We have the owner, the agent, and a neighbor. Number 14 is a planner. Okay, I think we're going to take a, a lunch break now and then we'll come back and deal with item 13, 14, and 15 and then move into the afternoon session. Okay. And we'll take a break of half an hour. Is that okay? Okay.
for those in the audience, we'll have uh, three more items, and then we will go to the afternoon session. Even though the afternoon session is, is supposed to start at 1.30, it says, or shortly thereafter, it will obviously be shortly thereafter. But we will get there. Okay, so our next item is item number 13, 105 Prairie Drive. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this item? No, okay. Do we have the applicant? Thank you. Honorable Chair. Okay, just a second, sir. I just need to introduce this item. Sure. This is item number 13, 105 Prairie Drive. It is to demolish the existing dwelling and to construct a new two-story dwelling and I believe we have 13 uh, variances that are being requested. Yes. Do you wish to make a presentation? Yes, Honorable okay. Chair. Would you Good afternoon. And address. Please? And all the committee. My name is MD Moinul Islam. Address is 35 North Ujjal Boulevard, Scarborough. I am representing this application as an agent of the owner. This project proposed as a single family detached dwelling with two secondary units in the basement with a few variances. And those are very uh, general and minor in nature, referencing surrounding neighborhood as well as maintaining standard functional and responsible development. Uh, my uh, owner actually to uh, have a bit bigger house to accommodate his uh, grown up family. So that's why actually we uh, came here with some variances so i would like to urge you to consider the merit of this proposal and i'm ready to addressing any concern you may suggest thank you okay any questions for the applicant sir getting 13 variances is a substantial number. Did you consider uh, trying to meet some of the zoning bylaw provisions? Yeah, no problem. If it's a we will consider it. Okay. All right. Any questions from? No? Okay. We have a second speaker. Mr. Cahill, is, is the owner going to speak on this matter, sir? He's listed as a speaker. No? Do we have Mr. Cahill, uh, Khalil? Yes, and, uh my name is Ibrahim Khalil. I'm the owner of the applicant, but uh, actually I'm the very honestly said to my the I have a big family for the my the, all our family members the I need the more space and also my uh, daughter going to the university and my uh, grandmom and my mother in law sometimes is to with me. This is the reason I need the bigger space. And also this house is the very, very, you know, older, almost 1945, this house is okay. Mm -hmm. So I need my safety for my child and the, my family. This is the reason I am for the uh, approval for you, ma'am. Thank you, I appreciate. Okay, thank you. Yes, I've been in this area 
Uh, there's a lot of what was called the wartime uh, houses built, so they are fairly modest houses, and I've seen that there are changes being made. Um, is uh, Candace Lombard on there? Okay, Candace, go ahead, please. Hi. Okay, hi. Um, I am at 103 Prairie. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, sorry, I just want... What I have to say um, is uh, it's clear after listening to many other residents in the beginning that the city, not, not, not on behalf of the committee members, but the city doesn't really care about us. Um, nonetheless, I would like to put forward my thoughts. Um, currently, we already have three new builds that are nowhere near complete on our street after a two-year ordeal in which several of us banded together as neighbors to object uh, due to the de destruction of our street's beautiful streetscape of a, one and a half stories. Um, and now another monster house. Um, so out of curiosity, um, does anyone on this panel really want to live in a house in which the wood has endured rot from snow and rain for months on end? Uh, today is a great example as it pours rain into the house in which several windows and doors still have not been installed. They didn't use any outer barrier house wrap to protect the wood structure from rain and snow before it was bricked. It only recently got bricked, but not completely as several outer front walls are still exposed and bare. The reason I mentioned this is because the original house was made of high quality materials and built to last. We have trucks coming and going. We have construction taking place around the clock, even when it is not permitted. And we've had to call the city several times to inform them about regulations that have not been abided by. This is a lot of time out of our daily lives, which could have been avoided. This is the exact description of the property when I moved in eight years ago. Welcome to the ideal home for first time home buyers, a lovely three bedroom brick house located on a sun filled lot on a child friendly and low trafficked street. This is the way the street once was, the reason I moved here. I'm appalled that the city is not working hard to preserve older homes that can easily be updated and added on. Preserving history should be more important, but now it is being lost forever. We are one of the few streets left in Toronto with a preservation now of what remains 12 one and a half story jewels of mid-century uniform design layout. These houses may need some renovations, additions and or upgrades, but do not need to be demolished to make way for oversized houses and ruin the integrity of our street. And ironically, riding away as we speak because of the rain today. Um, built in the mid 40s, they have stood the test of time, all the while announcing to the local community that this is where our World War, uh, World War II veterans lived, as mentioned earlier. Madam Speaker, um, Ben 112 Prairie bought his house off of Victor, a World War II veteran who was the original owner, the former owners of 105 Prairie lived in the house over several decades and poured their heart and soul into maintaining it. They were true representatives of pride of ownership. They'd be devastated if they knew all their hard work and care was just being destroyed. I knew them personally and they talked so highly about this neighborhood that they raised their children and grandchildren. Also, I wanna mention the current owner of 105 Prairie did not reach out to us to address any of our concerns, which would have been a respectful thing to do. Through my studies and research, I have seen incredible renovations of these one and a half stories just north of St. Clair and Pharmacy. They've added second floors, extended the rear of the house, enhanced the value and size by utilizing the well-built frame, thereby warding off tons of waste to landfills. And isn't that the city's goal to divert waste by 70% by 2026? I got that stat rate from the website. If you can't build within one or two rules, that's very different than need to build outside of 13 separate rules you can't follow. Minor variances are not minor and they greatly alter the developability of, of land. None of these variances are necessary in my opinion as this proposed house is already too large. My focus is on the fact the house is too long, 19.43 meters, almost two meters over the permitted length and the side yard setback, which is proposed at 0.6 meters. Currently there are driveways that set apart our properties so 0.6 meters greatly reducing the house to house distance. It will also block two of my windows, which now will have to face a wall. All the while the proposed layout leaves the owners enjoying airspace at the back of their house, which overlooks and removes privacy from my secluded yard. The design is also requesting a double parking garage and driveway. No houses currently on our street have that much driveway space. Um, this greatly will impact runoff and less green space or soft landscaping ultimately will impact the runoff to the two adjacent properties and surplus the storm sewer drains. I 
would like to ask those on the panel again to just reflect on the experience of loss of sunlight, privacy, views. These were mentioned earlier in presentation, spacing, openness, which results from the mass height and bulk of these proposed developments towering over our houses. The degree of spaciousness, sunlight, and privacy that was dictated by the zoning bylaws existing when the neighborhood was developed is something the city should be obligated to protect. We should be able to rely on our municipalities' former zoning policies, and it is a breach of trust that they are being dismantled at an alarming rate. Again, I will conclude with all I can say is I just don't feel they care about us. And um, I really feel strongly about this as a first time home buyer. Um, you know, and this is, can be directed over to Olivia Chow. I know I'm extending it further, but, you know, um, chance of home ownership in Toronto is, is becoming less and less of a reality for young people. And here we are just crashing these great, strong, um, well-built homes, beautiful homes down and, and making way for big monster homes that no one are out of reach for so many. Um, so anyways, thank you uh, for your time. Um, and I do really hope you can reconsider some of these variances. Thank you very much, Madam. Uh, thank you for your comments. I have been out in that area, um, taking a look at the housing. It was in front of this committee maybe a year, maybe two years ago. And I know at that time you were also trying to get um, a historical designation. I don't believe that designation has gone through to preserve the, the wartime housing. But the area is changing and there is a lot of change in the area. I think what we're seeing with um, this application for 13 variances is people want change, they want bigger. So those are my comments. Committee members, do you have any comments? Any questions? Yes. Just, just, just a general comment. Um, I, I realize that it's concerning to live on a street that, like this one, that amazingly, the housing stock is virtually unchanged for 80 years, I guess. Um, that, that's amazing. But, and, and I realize when somebody comes in and wants to do something much larger and much different, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a concern. However, um, we don't address um, projects based on the comparison with what is on the street. We assess applications relative to the zoning bylaw provisions. And I guess my take on this, although there are a lot of variances, I don't find any of them problematic or extraordinary. So um, I think uh, that, that's, I'll just leave that as my comments for now. Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? No? All right, shall we move into committee? Do I have a motion? Yes. Through, through the no. chair, um, I, I, I don't know if you did you ask the applicant if they wish to do a rebuttal? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, back to the applicant. Do you wish to, um, yes, do you have any further comments? Mr. Islam. I don't have any further comments. Okay. Okay, and no comments from committee? Um, do I have a motion? Mr. Taylor. Yes, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm satisfied that the variances, all of them meet all four tests under the Planning Act. I don't see anything extraordinary or troublesome or creating uh, negative uh, impacts, uh, to be honest. So I'm satisfied they meet the four tests. Um, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition number three. Okay, do I have a seconder? Thank you, Chair. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Stinson for approval, subject to the urban forestry conditions. All those in favor? All those against? I have voted against this variance. Um, I find 13 variances are just too, too many for uh, this property. But the uh, uh, variance application is approved. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number 14, 
8 and 2350 Kingston Road. Is the, are you the applicant, sir? I am the agent for the owner or the applicant, correct. Okay, Robert Levesque? Levesque, yeah, that's me, correct. Okay. This is a, a minor variance application. Um, we have a number of variances. I understand that you are close to getting your final approval and most of the variances in front of us are because of minor changes in satisfying uh, the approval authorities. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, yes, first of all, my name is Rob Lebecki with KLM Planning Partners who represent the applicant. Uh, address is 64 Jardin Drive in Vaughan, Ontario. Um, the majority um, of the variances um, that are being requested today, or at least I will say, um, number three is being withdrawn, first of all, um, because it's not necessary and we've confirmed with city legal staff that the authority to enter into a Section 37 agreement does exist. Um, and then eight of the variances are um, verbatim repeat variances of what was uh, previously approved last year. Um, and then uh, seven of the variances are um, modifications of the same, um, or uh, I guess it's new relief from the same zoning provisions as the previous approval. Um, what has happened here is that um, a corner rounding conveyance at the corner of Kingston Road and Sharp Street um, was not considered uh, previously. Um, once that land is conveyed, there is a technical uh, zero meter setback at the um, uh, point of the corner of the building. Um, there is no change to the balance of the setback of the building. Uh, there has been no change to the exterior uh, form of the building. Uh, the FSI has gone up slightly as a result of the corner rounding removing area from the site. <laughs> Um, as well as uh, refinement of the uh, exterior cladding of the building, which has added um, some minor interior floor space. Um, and then there are variances related to landscaping. Um, uh, we've improved um, the landscaping, soft landscaping uh, amount. Um, we were previously approved um, for uh, less soft landscaping. Uh, we have uh, managed to um, provide more uh, vehicular parking spaces than we had previously. Um, and there is um, part of also providing stacked bicycle parking spaces, which is uh, one of the new variances that we are requesting. Uh, the old uh, Cliffside Scarborough uh, bylaw did not contemplate stacked bicycle parking spaces. And um, our minor variance request is to simply um, recognize the specifications of a particular manufactured bike rack, which allows bikes to be stacked. Um, and uh, with that, there has been a rearrangement of the underground garage, which allowed additional vehicular parking. Um, but it also was an um, adjustment in the location of the small car parking or the um, three car uh, parking spaces that would not have additional space provided um, on the side where there might be an obstruction, a wall or a pipe or a column. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody does have. I'm just trying to search for it in my agenda here, uh, but I'll ask, have you read the supplementary report by uh, planning staff? I have read the, the planning staff report uh, and they uh, recommend, they have no objection to the approval. Uh, and they have provided conditions which um, we don't object to. One of the conditions has already been satisfied. The rental housing demolition application has been approved by council, but that's fine, it'll, it'll sort of resolve itself. We don't have a problem with that condition. Um, and I believe transportation services issued revised comments. We were able to clarify our request with them and they have no objection subject to the condition that the small car parking spaces um, have signage indicating as such. And those spaces will be for residents and I believe there are mechanisms to also make them aware that those spaces um, are what they are. Okay. All right, any questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, just to be clear then, Transportation Services is not objecting to variants 15, 13, or 16, or 17. Through you, Madam Chair, that's my understanding. They're no longer objecting to anything. Thank you. Mr. 
Paul. Thank you, Madam. Through you, I have a little bit of a difficulty, and you can help me out, sir. Sir, there were three stages in which you have applied. The first time you applied, you had 17 variances, substantially approved. Second time, you applied, same thing, approved. But there was a repetition of many variances in the second attempt. In the third attempt, I find only two variances which are different from the other one. I fail to understand why you are applying and you are not agreeing with the staff when they mention the substantially in, in accordance with blah, blah. Could so, you please explain to me? Through the chair. So essentially what has happened is with the previous approval, the um, condition of approval was that the building constructed be substantially in accordance with the drawings that were before committee when they made the decision. Um, and ultimately, we have submitted for a zoning review by a city zoning examiner. And they have provided a comment that they aren't sure, I suppose, if they are substantially in accordance, which leads me to believe that they believe they aren't substantially in accordance. There's been a revision to the streetscape, and part of that is to um, remove some of the soft landscaping, which isn't permitted in the Kingston Road yard, um, and to locate um, some bicycle parking in that location. And as a result, the drawings are no longer substantially in accordance, in their opinion, with the previously approved plans, uh, which I suppose um, negates any previous approval uh, based on them being revised drawings. And so that's why we're here again to ask for all the variances all over again. And then, you know, we've just made our fifth site plan submission. And so there are uh, always some sort of small tweaks that we have to make as we sort of uh, navigate that process. Um, hence some of the changes. We have certainly tried to, uh, at every opportunity, uh, improve uh, and, and make the condition better and, and improve compliance, um, but not quite uh, full compliance. Sir, with due respect, have you read the transportation report? Through you, Madam Chair, yes, I have. Sir, I will draw your kind attention towards variance number four. It says hard material not allowed for outdoor patio use. And 13 says transportation services is recommending for refusal. I don't believe transportation services are recommending refusal of, of any of the application or any of the variances. I believe we have full support and we have planning staff support. Uh, the variance number four um, is related to there being no hardscaping, um, hard landscaping permitted in the Kingston Road yard. And we have provided a planter between a um, ground floor level uh, restaurant and patio use that was requested by city staff through the processing of the application. And I believe there is another planter um, adjacent to a uh, walkway connection that is supposed to connect Kingston Road with uh, the laneway in behind, Sandown Lane, I believe it is. Any other questions? Okay. And staff have some conditions. You are in agreement with the uh, the conditions. Okay. Uh, that's correct. We have no we have no issue with the conditions that are proposed. You're close to site plan approval. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> okay. What is the wish of the committee? Oh, all right, we can take it into committee, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you again for answering our questions. Um, this is a big project, and there's a lot of moving parts, as some of the committee members uh, addressed, and we had the agent speak to. Um, I think it meets the four test rule, and I, I find that it's not in any conflict that I can see, so I just want to put my comments on the record at this moment. Yes, Mr. Reed. Thanks, Chair. I agree with my colleague. I, I think that the changes that we've seen before us are really the result of the evolution of a complex project over time, um, and especially given uh, conveyances of land. And so I think it's understandable that these changes happen um, with time. And I think that 
the substance of the project is still there and that and the incremental impact of these changes that we see before us are are very minor. Uh, so I'm satisfied with it. I think it reflects a reurbanization of Kingston Road and is supportable. So I'm happy to move approval of the application subject to transportation and community planning conditions. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Taylor. Madam Chair, you and I approved basically this proposal last June. Yes. And I haven't changed my opinion, so I'm gonna second the motion. Okay. You'll be happy to know that I haven't changed my opinion either. Through, through the chair, um, just for a point of clarification, this is an amended application. Pardon? This is an amended application. So um, should the committee approve it, approve as amended, subject to community planning and transportation services conditions? We, we, we do this as an amended application? Yes, sir. Okay. And variance right. three being removed. Okay, all right. Moved by Mr. Reed, seconded by Mr. Taylor. Approval of this application as amended. Subject to community planning uh, issues and urban, uh, is it urban, no, traffic? Transportation, okay. You know what it is. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? The application is approved. In favor, Mr. Hahn is opposed to the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our last application of a morning session is item number 15. We have lost item number 15 here. Okay, item number 15 is 1302, 1302 Ellesmere Road. The application is to include a vehicle a dealership and car storage on the property. There is existing auto repair uses and you have a number of letters of support and a supplementary report that says the use is permitted in the official plan. So, can I have your name, sir? Uh, first of all, good afternoon, Madam Chair and the members of the committee. My name is Atta Sayed. I'm a representative on behalf of the owner and I'm a family friend. Plus, also, we have the agent who's online. Okay. So you want the agent to do the presentation? Yeah, but basically, um, there are a few points that I want to reiterate to, for on behalf of the owner himself, if you're going to be there. Okay. And your your name is Mashi? My Ma name is Atta Sayed, A-T-T-A, -T -T -A. last name is S-Y-E-D. Oh, okay. I have you as the owner's representative. Is the um, is Mr. Mishir also in the audience? Uh, so the agent's name is Michelle. He is online. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's better. <laughs> uh, the agent's name is Mashad, and she is online. Okay. Who wants to do the presentation? If, if she will be doing the presentation. Okay. All right. So take a seat for a few minutes, and we will ask the Thank agent. You. Hello, Madam Chair and committee members. I'm Mashad Meshkar. My address is uh, 180 West Beaver Creek Road, Richmond Hill, and I'm the agent of the, this application. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm speaking on behalf of the property owner Darmesh Patel, who is licensed automotive technician with over decades of experience in this field. Is also the owner of Star Auto Tech, a business with over 20 years of establishment. Operates under a permitted public garage license, specifically designated for car repairs and service shop. 
The subject property is located in an employment industrial zone and is requesting a variance for courses and car storage to be added to the, to the existing uh, public garage license permitted use. This addition use would allow them to become a registered dealership, providing customers with the assurance of the dealing with uh, uh, certified professionals. Furthermore, car storage is closely related to car sales, as it is often necessary to store inventory of used car for sales on the property, as well as keep clients' car, keep clients' cars uh, overnight or longer during repairs or insurance approval processes. And uh, there is more than sufficient space on the property to, to accommodate these needs as outlined in the plans. The following points outline our support for the variances. First, uh, community support. The owner has spoken with the, uh, all neighbors and obtained our approval from the surrounding neighbors and all businesses in the neighborhood are uh, supportive of this uh, development. Um, uh, and they're, they are recognizing the potential of enhancing business opportunities within the neighborhood. And several neighbors, four of them, provided uh, supporting letters as well and as evidences in the documents. Uh, furthermore, there is no objection regarding this proposal. And the second point is uh, comparable establishments. The surrounding area includes numerous, de numerous dealerships as illustrated in the map included in the cover letter that we sent it before. There are four dealerships such as Hadia Fine Cars and Legacy Motors uh, and others just within 400 meters away and many more within a two kilometers radius of the subject locations. And the, uh, the third point is uh, meeting zoning requirement. The proposal meets all zoning requirements uh, mandated by the zoning bylaw in chapter 150.90, a specific use regulation for vehicle dealership. We are, we are not enlarging or adding any addition to the building. We are simply changing the use of the existing retail store, which is part of the existing building to a dealership retail store that will, that will work closely with the existing car repairs and service shop. This development will positively impact the surrounding areas respecting and enhancing the neighborhood's characters while providing excellent service to the community. And uh, the four item is historical use. The subject property served as a Toyota dealership 28 years ago, emphasizing its historical connection to the automotive retail. And uh, at the end, it's important to highlight that the community planning has consulted with the official plan teams and their comments is that automotive dealership as a retail and service use within areas designed a general employment area are allowed. This is a significant point for us as it indicates that the community planning authorized permit, uh, authorized, uh, authorities permit dealership, uh, dealership use at this location. And uh, I, I kindly request that the Committee of Adjustment carefully review our minor variances and uh, considering community support, adherence to regulatory requirements and, and alignment with and close connection to other vehicle dealerships and neighboring business establishment. Thank you so much and I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you. Any questions of the applicant? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Yes, I have a question. Um, I'm having trouble understanding the variances that you're requesting when I'm re reading the language that you've used in the, uh, in the application. Specifically, I don't understand, and can you explain what is meant by, quote, it is applied for the PRO period car dealership in employment industrial zone. I don't know what that means. Could you explain it to me, please? Uh, explain the variance, you mean? Yes, I don't understand it. Yes. Okay, so right now the, the property is located in an employment industrial zone. And according to the zoning bylaw, it's not permitted to have a, a car dealership and car storage in an industrial in the, uh, in the employment industrial zone. And this is our variances to get a permit to have this use in this property. Perfectly good oral explanation and your presentation, I understood it as well. I guess I'm just... 
I'm, I'm concerned about the clarity of your, your notice, but, but I'll, I'll defer to my colleagues on this, but when I, you know, if I'm being literal here, I, I, don't, I don't get that. What's, what's PRO period mean? PRO period, what does that mean? Sounds proposed. Like proposed so, car storage. Proposed. Proposed. Oh. Yeah, why, why, sorry, didn't, why didn't you use, why didn't, why didn't you use the simple two-syllable word "proposed"? I, I'm I'm so apologize about that. Okay, it's so, sorry. I, I just proposed. get headaches at this time of day. Okay, I'll let it go unless my colleagues have the same problem. Mr. Stinson, I have no problems, but thank you. Um, I did want to ask you with respect to this application. I I, I did notice um, there is no concerns from the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority, nothing from CP, and now that we've straightened out the actual wording here, we're, we're going from a repair shop for vehicles to storage and, um, sorry, what was the other one? Storage, uh, yeah, sales and storage. Is that correct? Yeah, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? The applicant? No. Okay, then, uh, sir. Yes, hi. Your name again, please. My name is Atta Sayyid, and I'm a representative of the owner, 1302 Ellesmere Street. Uh, I just want to make something clear for the members. So as we are currently uh, licensed under a public garage, and we are allowed to sell 10 and less cars a year. So we already are selling cars. And as you guys know about mechanic places, shops, sometimes it takes quite a, bite, quite a while time to get the cars fixed. And we have to get approval from insurance companies and stuff. So we often are storaging cars on our property, which we are equipped to do. We have fences, cameras, and we have more than enough adequate space. And we're not building anything or enlarging anything. We pass all four steps of the minor variances. This is just a simple issue of you guys allowing us to register a dealership and car storage goes along with it. So then we can charge the insurance companies for storage fees, however, they are not paying those at this time. And we serve up to hundreds, if not thousands of clients in the area. We employ 11 full-time members at our place from Scarborough. And if we get this approved, we will be looking into progressing and growing the business and hiring more and bringing more revenue into the city. That's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Khan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you, I want to ask, sir, the covering letter I have read that it has been a dealership for Toyota for 18 years. Is it true? Yes. So about two decades, it was a mechanic spot. And prior to that, it was a dealership by the name of Albrim dealership, and then they moved on to the Toyota dealership, which is still in Scarborough. So yes, that is correct. It was a dealership prior. And sir, you are applying right now for dealership too? Yes. So if approved, me and the owner, Patel Dermesh, we will be opening a dealership there from the same location. So partially the, the, the dealership will be there and we will continue with mechanic work as we are allowed. So we want these, these proposed variances to be added so we can register a dealership simply and then we can, you know, we also have uh, car storage. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, thank you. Any other questions? No. <laughs> I see there's no conditions uh, attached to this. Do I have a motion? Mr. Khan. Thank you, Madam. Uh, after listening to the presentation and having no recommendation from the staff, I move that this application be approved. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Chair, I'll second the motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Khan for the approval, seconded by Mr. Stinson. All those in favor? Thank you, your application is approved. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, that concludes the morning session of our agenda. We'll now move into the afternoon session. And because we're moving into 